it's time to get into ship show let's go last time we did this was in may um and when we talked about it there was i can't i feel like there was like one or maybe two new coal ships at that time and we've only gotten i think two new coal ships that have come out we've had another one that was promised um, and that is the halford we haven't seen the halford come out yet and halford when was that available first was that uh, in the summer around fourth of july yeah yeah they did that event for halford in west virginia 44 yeah uh, they put them in um, loot boxes that look like mailboxes, if I remember right. And that was that was for um, Independence Day in the United States. So around, you know, early July, that patch would have been like 12.5, 12.6 ballpark. Yeah. And so we're, we're looking at 12, uh, 11 now and 12, 12, I think is the new mm -hmm. one that's coming out. Or is it 12, 11 that's coming out? We're 12, 10. So it's 12, 11. We're 12, 10. It's 12, 11. Yeah. They're, they're going from 12, 11 to 13.0. Uh, that's the the schema now, right? Because January's patch is always like new, it's always new, the new, year. new main number, but point zero. So we don't really. I think there's been a couple years where we got to like a point twelve patch, um, yeah. but I don't think yeah. that's the case this year. Well, what we've got over here, so we won't be seeing Halford in tonight's list. We can probably chat about Halford if people are interested later on. But um, so again, when, when we do these coal ship rundowns, it's gotten longer and longer and longer as they've added more and more ships to the list, and so. Um, last time we did this, it was so long. It was like a four hour stream and we don't want that to be the case. So we're gonna, <laughs> I say this at the beginning of every one of these videos, we're gonna try to go a little bit quicker. Um, when that doesn't work out, what we're gonna do uh, <laughs> is uh, edit in post. But like, so last time I split it into two videos. So there's a couple of tier threes, a couple of, you know, some tier fives, some tier sevens, uh, some tier sixes and fours. Those are all in their own little video, um, which we filmed back in May. That set of ships has not changed one iota. It's been relatively static for a long time, although we did see Rio de Janeiro, I think was a newer one that was added to that list. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think if there was anything else that was more recent than that. Um, but uh, so that yeah, video is still there. And again, we'll put a we'll put a link to it down in the description. We and, and in my head, I said, we're gonna do all the eights, nines and tens. But of course I immediately remembered no such thing as a tier eight coal boat. No such thing lucky as a tier eight steel boat. No such thing as a tier eight research bureau boat. Exactly, lucky for us. It's just <laughs> nines and tens today, which is what we're gonna cover. Um, I think we're also really fortunate that none of the uh, none of the captain rework that just occurred uh, really has a ton of effect on any of those boats that are like lower tier. Right. So there's right. no like, re like, like we don't have to go back and be like, well, look, because of the captain's rework, uh, we really need to talk about. You yeah, know, you're going to take furious or, on Asian court. It's going to change whatever, the yeah. world. Like, I mean, you, you could, but like you might have been doing that already. You, you know, know, who knows? Like whatever. Second secondary build on Lazo isn't really a. <laughs> isn't really tearing the world. Not really apart. a thing you'd want to do. <laughs> So looking at the, the metrics here, we always have kind of this slide or this graphic, this infographic at the beginning. Um, these are the current counts of coal ships. You got 15 tier 10s um, and you got 12 tier 9s. That's what we're going to talk about today. So 24 boats ahead of us in conversation. Um, and then we'll leave those others into the other video. These are the classes. When we look at this all the time, and I say this every time we do one of these, um, whether it's steel or coal or research bureau, I always go, man, I wish there was more destroyers, but destroyer is actually the most populous class that is in this, uh, this category of ships. Now, I don't know if that's true of the nines and 12 or nines and tens, um, but it is true across all of the coal boats that exist in world of warships. So there's plenty of destroyers, plenty of cruisers, a group of eight battleships and two aircraft carriers. Um, and I think we'll talk about both of the carriers today and uh, a chunk of the rest of those. At the bottom, I've got the, the pricing. The reason we're doing this this time of year, of course, is because the coupon is coming back. That renews, I believe, on the 4th, uh, which I can confirm. Um, but uh, basically, if you buy all of these ships with coupons, it costs you about five and a half million uh, coal. If you don't spend them, uh, buy them with coupons, it's 7.4 million coal. So there's a lot of savings to be had with the coupon if you're using it. Scott, we get people who come to the Discord or come to the stream or come by YouTube comments and they go, hey man, um, do I have to save my coupon for steel ships? 
Oh, you know, and we talk about this a lot too. You know, when it comes to the value proposition of coal ships and steel ships, when does it make more sense to look at like a steel ship for your coupon versus a coal ship? Do you think? Uh, depends on where you are in your world of warships journey. Uh, if you if you uh, don't have any coal ships and you don't have any steel ships and you're earning your so much coal and you want to get a coal boat, you should get it at a discount, right? Um, if you have if you're if you're Johnny Chad Unicum and you have all the steel ships and all you spend your steel on is camo for tech tree boats, like steel uh, but, camos but, and yeah. But <laughs> you four five zero one comes out and you've got that coupon sitting there. You should use it on that, right? Like why wouldn't you? Um, yeah. You know. So so I, I I you know I think I I don't think I know a lot of people say oh hold on to that coupon for a steel ship. I would only hold on to that coupon as a as a player. Um, for a steel ship, if you knew that right now you have X steel and right. you if you use that coupon, you could get a steel ship. Or if you can project out, especially with the 12.11 um, snowflake event, uh, if you have, uh, what is it, eights, nines, and super ships that grant you steel, um, for playing them next patch. So yeah. if you're, if you know, if you, if you use something like Clyde's calculator spreadsheet, uh, or if you use, you know, use tools like that and you can project in the next couple of months that you would be able to get a steel ship if you use the coupon and that's mm -hmm. important to you, then obviously, you know, you got to put a little bit of thought into it. But, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I think the important thing is no matter what you're doing, if you're saving for a steel ship or if you're going to buy your first coal ship or you're going to buy a coal ship available to you, use the coupon. I mean, uh, yeah, use it, it for what makes waste. sense. Yeah, yeah, use it for what makes sense. Yeah, and, I, you know, I, the reason I always want to make sure, it feels like that was, you know, I, I don't know, it feels like a staged question. It probably, I mean, it kind of was um, because we always have new players come in and they go, hey, man, I was on the forum or I was on Reddit and somebody said I should never use this for coal. That's like a Sith speaking in absolutes, right? You should definitely use it for the thing that makes sense for where you are right now in your as you said your world of worship's journey right like you're yeah. you're trying to buy something it's going to benefit you it's going to benefit your account um you should use a coupon to get a better deal on it and if it's not reasonable for you to be getting a uh, a steel ship right now um then use it for a coal ship feel absolutely no remorse with that and and you know no need to to hide that from people it's okay to mm -hmm. use the coal yeah. the ship for or the the coupon for a coal ship yeah, I don't, I don't know about you, and I don't know how long they've even offered that coupon. But I know when I when I started that playing, that coupon was together, a thing. It took me, lifts. it took me like a, a long time before I had enough steel to consider buying a it steel ship. Takes a long I, time. Something like two years or something like that. I had been playing before I bought a steel ship, um, and so yeah, I used a coupon on it because I had one queued up for it. But I used that coupon on coal ships. Um, prior to that because those were what were available to me I didn't have them and there's no reason not to so yeah, um, yeah. you know I think again you know we're talking about this as uh, getting this you know we're having these conversations now because the coal's about to reset because we do this video a couple times a year um, you know and, the, and and yeah if if you are a guy buying coal ships and you get the coupon in your in your mitts next week use it to buy a coal ship <laughs> get your uh, grubby little your grubby little you ship know, grabbers you know, on one of these babies yeah. you should use it to get the use yeah. to get the ship <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny your little meat hooks um we got a question in chat from Helmet who said, what about using steel? He didn't say what about, but I'm at Helmet, I'm I'm paraphrasing. What about using steel for coal ships? I have some thoughts on this. I I don't know. Maybe maybe you should go first though. Uh, I mean, I I don't think I would. I I may have in the past used some steel to put me over the top on a coal ship purchase. Um, mm. but uh, it really just again it's situational. Like, um, if if you're newer and the only steel you have is something you got from. Uh, battle passes and uh, you know maybe you got some steel from a super container a you know monthly yeah, container or yeah. something and you've and you've only and let's say you have under you know under a couple thousand steel like 
and you're looking to buy a tier 10 coal ship and you can use that to put you over the top with a coupon or something, I don't think there's any problem with that. I don't think anybody should shame anybody for using anything no. to do anything. And and that unfortunately the, this community and this game has a lot of that. There's a lot of experts, <laughs> a lot, lot of, of experts, a lot of real, a lot of you know. a lot of topics. Everybody's an expert on every topic. And um, <laughs> but you know I think I think if if that is what works for you, mm. and and that brings you joy with Adam, that that show that used to be like on Netflix about like organizing houses. Like if it gives you joy, if that brings you joy, yeah. and you're like yeah, if I spend this thousand steel that i have and this coal i have and use this coupon i can get cur first and i'm so excited to do that do that like yeah. go for it like knock yourself out it's a video game for <laughs> sakes like <laughs> like like go yeah. for it yeah now if you're like you know if you're like turbo chad like optimizer man no you don't use that coupon for anything but steel boats you don't spend your steel on anything but steel boats you know, you yeah. don't buy, you don't even buy tier nine coal boats or tier seven coal boats. You only buy tier tens. You only buy tier ten steel boats until you have all those because that's the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, do whatever brings you more, whatever brings you joy. Yeah, we are. Um, it is know. a fun thing that we do. We, World of Warships is yeah. a game. It is not a second yeah. career. Yeah, right? we want to do fun things with it. Um, and, and, you know, I would say that in general, if you're, if your goal is to get a steel ship and you have an opportunity to spend steel on a coal ship, don't, yeah. don't, don't like throw that goal away to get the coal ship sooner. There, there is a lot of benefit in saving that stuff. So, I mean, I think as a general rule, we, what we saw in chat roll by was a lot of people go, no, never do it. No, it's a terrible idea. And, and I think in a general sense, I agree, right? If you're going to try to get coal ships and steel ships, go ahead and do it. I think you know, for me, like if I was really close and I was a new player and I really wanted like Napoli or something and I my, my clan mates had been telling me it was so cool um, and it's really seemed like my kind of thing and I, w and I could spend eight or 900 coal or steel to get it along with my coal pile and my coupon. I could see myself, you know, kind of compromising a little bit there. I think the further you get into the game, if you're doing activities that earn you steel on the regular, there's some really great ships in the steel section of the store and you should if you have a goal to get one you should set that goal and not deviate from it and not spend your steel on coal ships that would be my recommendation if you're not doing those activities if you do not play ranked if you do not uh do uh i don't know if there's more steel on the paid side of the battle pass i think there is right if you there do is. not do clan battles right if you're just never gonna earn enough to get that borgonia then you can use steel however you want but i think that especially now with battle pass even on the free side there's some steel um, you know, I think that more people have more access to steel ships than ever before. Um, and that's, I think, a good thing, a healthy thing for the community. And so in my, my recommendation would, would be kind of in agreement with chat, which is, hey, man, maybe maybe don't do that as long as that's a goal. If that's not a goal for you, if you do not care and you're just looking to get, like you said, get that curve first and get out there and have fun, um, do what makes you happy. Make sure you're having a good time. And on the subject of steel ships, um, we, Scott and I went to lunch today and when we got back, he said, hey man, when are we gonna do that coal discussion? And I said, we gotta do it pretty soon. It's either gotta be, to, uh, I said, actually what I said was, it's either gotta be Thursday or Saturday. And he said, Thursday is today. <laughs> um, and we decided to do it today because that fits our schedule a little bit better. Um, so we will be doing a steel conversation. I'm guessing, I'm gonna try to put that next week um, and we'll do it one of the weeknights next week is gonna be my, my guess. We'll see. Um, and we'll try to get that video out soon. So if you're interested in a steel discussion like the one we're about to have for coal ships, that's coming in hot. What, you know, what's really, what's even really new there? Like, There's two Gato. new ships. Gato officially came out. We talked about it last time and uh, yeah. because it was about to come out. Um, Ruggiero de Lauria it's not came out. out. It came out it and regular people could out. buy it. Yes, it did. No, they did. It was not regular people and no, they could not buy it. <laughs> it was people with 6,000 more steel than they normally have or whatever it was overpriced going. it was you couldn't overpriced. use a coupon on it and you it could was not for, use a coupon it's and it true. was for dads and turbo whales come on that didn't really come out it it was out for the general populace so that one's on that's the like list. that's like you saying yeah well summers came out for steel too for i bought it for sixty thousand steel in an auction <laughs> it's not like, quite I, like that because that was a variable price there was a fixed price for it i under, i totally understand your argument and i think yeah. you've got some legs there the other one that came out um 
I, that I think it was just about to come out last time, or maybe it had just come out with Z42. I can't remember if that was new since we talked uh, in May. I think that was already, already out. out. Yeah. I think that was already out. So those are yeah, the we can recall we can record yeah. a conversation about Gato and Loria about in about ten minutes after this one's done, and you can just glue it to just staple it together. Yeah, yeah, staple it anyway. We'll do. You'll we have can. to edit. You'll have to edit all this out. So we should stop doing this. <laughs> the front matter bullshit will be the label yeah. for this part of it. Okay, we're gonna go on. So that was our metrics. The first page we got of ships is these six right here. These are ships that have been out for a while. The first one is a really interesting ship. It's the Black. Now, Black is a coal ship, but she comes from the old Steel Legends list. Um, it's a tier nine American destroyer. She's uh, Fletcher. Uh, she's a Fletcher class destroyer. She's got some of the slowest torpedoes in the game. Um, and she has a radar. I think she was the first destroyer ever to have a radar, but she costs a lot of coal, Scott. She's 296,000 coal. Mm -hmm. which makes her a great target for people who are thinking about using a coupon. This is something we didn't just talk about yeah, earlier, but there's a couple of these ships, this one in Neustra in particular, which are 296,000 coal. If we round that up to 300,000, that means if you use a coal coupon, you're going to save 75,000 coal, which is a lot. I guess it's 74,000. If you don't round it up, I could have done that math, but um, it's a really good ship, good stealth, American guns like you expect, good smoke, radar. I, I mean, there's really not much to dislike about the Black. I think I think we're both fans of this ship. Mm -hmm. um, what do you yeah. think of the Black? Yeah, I, I mean, the whole, like, when it, I'm glad it's not a steel legend anymore. They did that whole thing when they first put this out for coal where they didn't call it a coal ship. They called it a steel legend, so you couldn't use the coupon. I don't know when that went away. They but on that. this in New Strashimi, you can use the coupon now, which is cool. Um, Black's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a, again, it's, it's a, this ship originally was like an award for ranking out, like back in early seasons of ranked or something, right? Right. Like, like multiple times. Like, well, yeah, effort. multiple times. Yeah. It was really hard to get. Then it was a steel boat. And now it's just an expensive coal boat. And it's not, it's been power crept over the years. Obviously, this year, a line of radar and smoke destroyers was introduced to the game. Um, right. I like this ship better than those. I do too. Uh, personally, <laughs> I like, I like I, some of those boats, yeah. but I like this one better. Yeah, I, I, you know, and, and I, I like this ship because it's fun. It's, you know, in the chart of Fletcher's, which is a different ship show, um, this, this <laughs> boat. This boat ranks relatively high for me on the list of Fletcher's in game. Um, you know, the it, again, it plays the gun ballistics and everything like that plays like Tech Tree Fletcher or Tech Tree Tech Tree Chung Mu. If you're familiar with those, um, the torpedoes right. are are historically known as sea mines because they are super slow. Very very slow. Um, like what, fifty knots or fifty four knots or something. Um, but the, the ship itself, I still think, is really relatively fun to play because you have long American smokes and a, and a pretty good radar duration, unlike like Gdansk and Katsonis uh, at the same tier and Spl oh, is it Split? Splits That's the other one. Eight. Yeah, uh, unlike yeah. those where the radar is like 10 seconds, the, the radar duration on Black is actually longer and, and more fruitful and usable. So... You know, you can you can mm -hmm. use this ship to radar another destroyer in a cap, smoke yourself up, and then kill that other destroyer while your radar's going. Maybe on your own, maybe with the help of some friends, but it's a lot more realistic. So yeah, I think Black's a it's a fun ship. I would definitely recommend if you're gonna buy it using a coupon. It makes it cost what the other tier nines cost without a coupon, basically. Yeah. Um, that's exactly right. Uh, but it's super expensive to get it without <laughs> using a coupon. So Helmet dropped a note in chat said, hey, being a Black Friday ship makes it a worse value. Um, I I don't know if I totally agree with that. I mean, it is it is an expensive ship. I mean, it depends on if money or coal is harder for you to get, right? Black Friday ships, you know, when you buy a Black Friday ship that is a coal ship, you could have gotten that ship for free, but you get it for in-game currency. And so if you're the person for whom money comes faster than coal and you're busy and things, then the Black Friday ship's a good deal. Plus the Black Friday one looks pretty sick. Um, but the, uh, the I think that's kind of a question of that player's personal economy and how that works out. Um, I do think, of course, if uh, you get the Black Friday one and you have this one, during that time, if you get them during that time of year, um, then you've got an opportunity to get the the uh, doubloons coupon. I don't think you get that coupon if you get the 
the regular black like in March, for example. So I think if you're a person who's trying to optimize that kind of stuff and you have Black Friday black right now, um, wait until next Black Friday or whenever that period is where you can get the missions yeah. to buy the other yeah. one. Yeah, and, and 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 you know, it's you can say, well, because they put out a black version in 2023, it marginalizes the value of it. I don't believe that's true because that event's over and you true. won't be able, in theory, you won't be able to get it as a black ship for another year if it's available next year. No right, guarantees. Right. The ships always seem to come back now in the black sales, but currently, um, you know, that stuff's over with, right? So I think you might be able to eke out some Black Friday containers still from a couple lingering missions, but that's basically done with. And again, that's exchanging money or luck in, in <clears> things <throat> for something that you get for free by playing in coal. So uh, yeah. I don't think it marginalizes it. I Unless you're like a, a collector, I wouldn't get both. If you just got the black yeah. one, then yeah. if you got black B, you don't need black. Agreed. Pure and simple. Like you Agreed. have it and you know how it plays and you're enjoying it. Use your coal on something else. Yeah, agreed. I, I do think that adding it to the, you know, what what adding it to the black ship list does is it gives you options, right? It's just more choices, mm -hmm. and and we like choices, even if they're the same ship with a different camo. Um, that's generally an okay thing. I do believe that historically, if you get the black or another black ship that you got the B version of out of a container during the holiday event, I remember a couple of years ago I was getting the Black Friday missions at that time too. So hopefully we have some folks who can do that. Don't quote me on that. I don't, I'm not 100% sure that that's going to be the way it works, but it has worked that way in the past. So that's a good thing. But I think we can probably move on to New Strashimi, which is similar in that it was also a Steel Legend. Scott, do you want to start off the New Strashimi discussion? Uh, yeah, Tier 9 Soviet Destroyer. Again, this was a Steel ship. I don't know if it was ever given away for anything other than Steel. Um, it was pulled from the steel store due to, frankly, all these one like Flint, New Strashimi, and Summers were all pulled from the steel store around the same time. And they said at the time, like, like Flint and Neustra were pulled just because um, people weren't really buying them. People were buying tens. Um, yeah. I think I think uh, we were excited to get New Strashimi when it became available more for the general populace as a coal ship. I think it's kind of an interesting ship in comparison to your other choices at tier nine for Soviet DDs, because this ship is more torpedo focused than um, uh, what Agnavoy or yeah um, the Tashkan uh, Tashkent are, and so this this ship's definitely more torpedo focused. Uh, you know, the ship might look familiar to you if you took part in the Lushun dockyard because the Lushun was an asset reuse of the hull and everything of the new Strashimi, uh placed at tier 10 as a pan-asian ship with wildly different uh it's a very uh, different play, wildly different play style like yeah. uh so so i know i know some folks because the guns are soviet guns on this might try to build guns on Nustra. i don't it's not really something i recommend i think you can play it more as a hybrid if you want to but i don't really think the reloads there to like really be an exciting gun platform um I think that it's more of a torpedo platform, although the torpedo reload on it is not like quick. Um, the right. torpedo range, the torpedo range on it isn't epic. Uh, Ten I don't kilometer think that, range. Yeah. Uh, at least in my build, the reload is over two minutes. Yeah. Um, Five point six kilometer conceal though, which is unheard yeah. of in Soviet destroyers. So. Yeah, really good concealment for Soviet destroyers, and generally really good concealment for Tier Nine destroyers. I think the only stuff that's going to be lower than that now is like Jaeger. Um, and maybe, maybe one of the Japanese ones. Um, so very, very low conceal. Um, yeah, it's quite, the, quite the, 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 you know, the gimmick on Neustra is that it has, um, like a super heel. Um, I don't, you know, that's not the technical term, but that's kind of the, the community specialized repair teams. Yeah, we call it a specialized super repair teams. It's yeah. more, it's, it's not like the weird heel on Lu Shun. It's a, it's a heel that is more like, like on Conqueror. It's just like, it can heal back a lot of damage um over time and it's not like a long running one like those weird heals on lucian right um, which makes it second 20 second heal 425 hit points per yeah. second again in clyde's build i'm not yeah. getting the official numbers yep. here but yeah but again that makes it different than a lot of destroyers like just being a dd with a heal um, that's great uh, being a dd with a heal that can heal back a ton of health is really great so um you know that's interesting about it i don't feel like we see a ton of people play neustra anymore but um, right. there's so many ships in game now, you, that could be said about a lot of ships. 
Yes, this is true. Uh, Pasha, thanks for the follow. And welcome to the channel. Um, uh, friend of Hydra says, how does the new Strashima compare to the old Strashimi? Um, get out, just depart. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Hydra. Um, Dead Horse says, the new Strashima is so underestimated. It really is. And I think it's partly because it's just they're both that people are kind of unfamiliar with. When this book came out, I'm a big fan of the Soviet Destroyers, and I wanted it bad enough that I bought it for 296000 coal without a coupon. Um, it was the most expensive coal boat I've ever purchased. <laughs> And we'll probably continue to be so for a very long time. So the boat is, um, it is unique in the term, in terms of the Soviet thing, uh, or Soviet line. Um, the super heel is, is worth doing. One thing you gotta be cautious with though, is that just because she's got the specialized repair teams and she's healing very quickly, does not mean that she can survive anything, right? You cannot stuff this thing in front of, you know, four or five guys in a, uh, in San Diego's or or Austin's and expect to survive, right? The DPM will get you. Uh, and you do need to make sure that you can actually survive the situations you put it in. And that can make it difficult to get full use out of the super heal. Um, there's a it, there's kind of a tipping point where it's where that's the right time to use it to keep you from being dead. And it's also the best time to use it to get the most out of it. Um, but she is pretty, pretty capable. She's got the DCP, she's got smoke, she's got a uh, uh, defensive AA consumable, she's got the super heal and she's got a speed boost. So she's got a lot of tools and tricks, kind of like the ships on the Grozovoy line. Uh, 10 kilometer torpedoes, Scott had talked about those a little bit already. HE and AP shells, nothing amazing there. Just four barrels of, I think it's a base five second reload. You can bring that down quite a bit. Um, I, I obviously I'm talking about this boat enough. You guys can uh, you understand that I'm yeah. so at least familiar with it. Um, she's a I play her more like a bit of an all rounder. You're more of a torpedo focused player with it, which kind of suits our styles. Um, but the mm -hmm. smoke is good, and you can gun farm from it. But it's not going to gun farm like a purpose built gunboat, right? You've still got to make sure you're using both of the types of ordnance, the guns and the torpedoes, in my book. Yeah, just just looking like flat stats. Um, on ship tool at the tier nine coal destroyers of which there are four uh i believe i think there's just four um neustra has the lowest ap dpm which you would you're like <laughs> oh well, how could that be it's actually sizably lower than z44 which no one considers a gunboat that is a true um, statement that's interesting it, I didn't it's know that. he it's he dpm is only a like 900 better than z44s um, which no one considers a gunboat. It's torpedo DPM is worst. Uh, actually, that's not right. It beats out Gronigan in torpedo DPM. Um, Thank you little, for that. I said a little <laughs> joke. I was like, wait a minute, Gronigan. Yeah. You fooled um, me. You know, it's torpedo range out of the coal. DDs is the lowest. Um, I think yeah. you know where you're. Where, what you're getting on this boat is you're getting a better concealment and you're getting that heal. Uh, the AA is abysmal. It's nothing to write home about. None of these ships. Well, Gronigan actually has decent AA. Gronigan's pretty most, good. You know, yeah. the other you know, Blacks is actually better than New Strashimis, and nobody thinks that's a good AA platform, right? So, right. so there's a lot to not like, in my opinion, about this ship at the cost, um, which I think is why we may not see as much of them. Um, yeah. I think if you're completing a collection, if you're into the concept of it, I think it's worth getting on a coupon. But I, I, I would have a hard time picking it over some of the other ships available uh, in the coal store right now. I just, I, I think this one more than any, unfortunately, should they should they need to like lower the price permanently and give up on this whole. People played steel, so we need to make now we need to make people play too much coal for it. I think they could just be like, okay, yeah. it's fine. Like, really, it's fine. This is only like a two hundred and twenty-five thousand coal boat. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah. I feel like but, they they're probably leaving it that way just because some people paid that already. Whereas, like with the free XP boats, when they brought over, you know, mm -hmm. Hayate, two million free XP, people were worried it was going to be expensive because of the precedent set with this ship with Black, yeah. and it wasn't mm -hmm. that way. Because I think war, even Wargaming's like, you know what, we know that's dumb, and we don't want to do that anymore yeah. either. And, and looking at this boat, you know, you talked about how it's not super powerful, but it is particularly unique. This isn't like a fact or a rule or whatever, um, but like, I mean, that does kind of make it feel more like a steel boat than a coal boat, right? Steel boats are often different in some special way than the rest of their 
peers from the same nation. Now, the weakness is not what I'm talking about, but the uniqueness, right? And so, like, in that way, it's kind of um, kind of special that way. But I, th I think, in general, you and I are both relative fans of New Strashimi. Do we think it's super powerful? Not necessarily, but it does bring something new to the table. Um, and I think... I haven't, uh, I haven't I played like it in a long... I haven't played it in a long time, and I don't think I'd reach for it anytime soon. I, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. There's just... There, you know, it only gets... It only gets two smokes. It only gets two speed boosts. It only gets two heals. Yeah, you got to build into some of that. Uh, I guess it's nice that it gets Def AA as like not a th you know it has all those things. But if you compare that to the tech line Russians, geez, like they have so many things. Like so that's not like that the particular. Line. You're talking about uh, that they side. all have yeah. like tons of things you can pick from. Like all these, every button is enabled, yes. right? Yes. And so so you know, eh, I just think. This is a ship that I think has been extra, exceptionally uh, power crept. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, to me, it's not that interesting anymore. Gotcha. Um, big thank you to BC Kazi for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, my name's Clyde, and I've got with me in on voice today, Scott Ahert. We're talking through all of the coal ships at tier nine and 10. So find a chair, grab a slice of pizza, and we'll we'll keep going. I think we've we've probably extended our new ship conversation longer than we needed to. Um, yeah. You just talked about Groningen, so uh, we'll talk Groningen now. So Groningen is um, is the Dutch variant of the what's the it just starts with an F. What is the other one? That, Friesland. The, Friesland. Thank you. Of uh, the Friesland, uh, which is a very powerful gun platform, great smokes, um, great hydros, uh, no no torpedoes, which was the joke we just had a moment ago about how Nistrashimi does exceed Friesland and Groningen's uh, torpedo DPM. Um, Groningen's actually a really good boat. Um, there are folks who like ships like this, and I kind of tend to categorize um, Groningen into the similar play style of like um, Forrest Sherman, even though the ships are, are quite different. Forrest Sherman does have torpedoes, they're just hard to use. It has sap, which Groningen doesn't, um, but they are very smoky, good hydro gunboats uh, primarily. Um, that do a pretty good job there. Um, Groningen for free XP was a pretty good deal. I think it was a million free XP. Of course, that's a thing in the past. Now it's in the coal shop for 228,000 coal here at tier nine. Um, I guess, Scott, I want to throw it to you and say, who's the kind of player who should be thinking about a Groningen or or might be thinking about a Groningen? Not necessarily just in playstyle, but also how they would use it for maybe captain training or I, I guess what yeah. might be your motivators for, for jumping into the Groningen into the pool? Yeah, there's there's more um, premium Dutch or Netherlands national ships now than there were, you know, a few years ago. Um, you know, you've got Groningen there now. It's been placed there. Uh, you have Tromp as well that we'll talk about. Um, there's a research bureau cruiser now in the Van Speek that's there. Uh, then there's you know ships like the Seven Provincian that were uh, that were dockyard ships that really aren't available anymore. But you know, if you're working up the Dutch cruiser line. Uh, working on a captain over there and this is a ship you want to go obtain and you can use that as a captain trainer um, you know you can throw a build on this for the destroyer build build some commander xp at a tier nine where you get nice economic bonuses for playing it and funnel that back into into building out a captain that's you know moving up your dutch cruiser line then that's you know that's a good way to to build out a a captain if you will uh you know i think i think nationally a, a nation like this is tricky because you're only going to ostensibly have one you know you're going to have like a tier 10 captain of, of eventually for the hadlau and you're not going to have um you know then it's like okay well do i have a destroyer build for Groningen? uh do i have a destroyer build for Tromp, which i would not consider probably the exact same build um you no, know, so so not. those are the so those are the kind of things you're going to run into there. But you know, if you're into um, again this, like you said, this tor the ship doesn't have torpedoes. It has extremely rapid firing guns. It has strong AA. It has good smoke and it has good hydros. So um, standard play methodology for this ship is cap contesting against ships that you can pick out with the hydros and then smoke to hide from and gun down, um, or you know, sitting back and lighting fires on. Uh, bigger ships with those guns and rolling fires and building damage that way. Uh, I think that's basically the play styles available to you on Groningen. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I think uh, I think that's popular uh, play uh, for a lot of people. I think it's kind of a fun ship to play. Yeah, exactly. I think um, we see a lot of times when I see people do with this ship is they they roll up. They don't necessarily even contest the cap. They just they camp near it. 
and they make it an awkward place for another destroyer to go, or they farm battleships over islands because the shells are very high in arcing. Um, good, decent fire chance, high rate of fire, um, and it's it's a really pesky ship. I always think it's very pesky and annoying when I'm facing one. When I'm in one, I tend to have a pretty good time with it. I do think Groningen looks really good. The camo they put on it, which we were showing on the screen here just a moment ago, looks really great. Um, and I believe Friesland is no longer available. So if you want yep. this boat, this is the one you can get, and it's for the Dutch line. So, um, the only, and there, it's an exact copy of Friesland. There's no differences whatsoever. Just that when Friesland came out, there was not a Dutch uh, country available, and so you could, um, and so they didn't put it there. They put it in the um, the European list, and so now we have, of course, Groningen, which uh, fits into its actual nation, which is cool. Yeah, yeah they were going to move Friesland, and the community said, "Hey," yeah. and so they said, "Okay, fine." You can keep your Friesland, or you can have a Groningen, and that's how they they did that. So a lot of us, yeah. like me, who had a Friesland, kept their Friesland as a as a pan Euro ship, and then went and got a Groningen after they came out. Because what we really needed was more premium destroyers in the pan Euro line to cause us to grind more and more captains right. over there, especially weird ones, you know. Um, yes. Thanks for the follows again, folks who rolled in with Beastikazi. Beastie, thank you again for the raid. Um, if you guys don't know Beastikazi, go check her out. She's the newest. I think she's the newest. World of Warship CC, um, a European CC. So check her out, uh, twitch.tv slash Bistikazi. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link in the uh, description down below as well. Um, but definitely go check her out. Um, yeah, a Groningen, I think, is a good boat. I think it's a, it's a good boat. Good AA, lots of reasons to get it. Um, and uh, and worth having in your port, especially if, like you say, if you're doing Dutch things, uh, you're right that it's not the same build as Tromp. Tromp is an oddball destroyer as well. It's got airstrikes and torpedoes, which is very different from Groningen. So you're going to need a different commander for the two. Um, you could slam the same commander on both, but it's not going to be optimized for either boat if you if you build it down the middle, you know, the commander. So do something uh, dedicated for each one um, if you have happen to have both. But um following ground again we roll into uh a gear do you want to talk us through a gear sure so a gear is a tier nine premium german um uh, heavy cruiser um it's both been out for a few years was a free xp boat until last year when they got rid of those and converted it to a coal ship um so it's a large cruiser with um larger caliber guns i think it's got like 305s on it as opposed to uh like the tech line where the heavy cruisers for germany uh have um two what 206s or something like 208 something along those lines uh, i can't remember yeah. what's on hindenburg but um so this ship has nine 300 305 millimeter guns um Generally AA or generally AP focused, like most German cruisers, it's going to get German quarter pen with the HE shells, but they don't have a high alpha damage. Um, ship has six kilometer torpedoes. It has characteristic of German ships. It has like a decent hydroacoustic search consumable, um, lets you pick out torps and things. Uh, it's kind of a big ship, kind of a clunky ship. Um, not a bad concealment, but not epic nowadays. Uh, you know, most new ships have much lower concealments. Um, it's a sister ship or a design sister ship to the research bureau ship, the Siegfried. They share the same hull, but the Siegfried has uh, even larger guns and less of them. Uh, right, right. So yeah, so mostly what you're getting with this ship is very similar to some of the things you get with German cruisers that you may have already played, which is like Hydros and and kind of more of an AP focus play style over the HE. Although I think you can get away with using the HE on the ships that reload quicker more often than on this one. Some people will build this ship for secondaries, but that's kind of a kind of a goof. I, I would only do that if I use this ship like in like co-ops or something. I don't know if I'd really want to use it that way in in real battles. But it does have uh, six kilometer torpedoes, and it is a relatively tough ship. Um, kind of a fun ship to play. It's been around for a few years now, um, and again, it could be used as a. Um, I think you can really get away with using it as a trainer for the Hindenburg line. I think you're going to have very similar captain builds for both. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing here that, you know, there's nothing obscure here. Like there's no radar here or there's, you know, there's no consumable or weird thing here that really makes it not something that you could That's also really... have a similar yeah. build. So it's probably pretty yeah. good to use for a, for a captain trainer as well if you're going up that line. 
That is really interesting too, because when you look at these two ships, you think they're very different, right? You're like, Aegir, that's not like Hindenburg at all. But you, I, I think I used the same commander on both of mine because yep. I discovered the same thing that you're just describing, right? Yes, Aegir's got the 305s, right? Yeah, 305s, mm -hmm. I think, for the main battery. Um, Hindis are 210s or two or threes or something, right? They're just over 200 standard, you know, fairly, uh, fairly standard heavy cruiser guns but like a lot of what's there is the same hydros you know six kilometer torpedoes guns that like using ap on stuff but they can start fires if they need to hindenburg's probably a little mm -hmm. bit better of a fire starter because of its faster reload but um but you're right i think you can share a commander between these two quite comfortably yeah. you could decide hey man look i found a difference between these two and this is it i'm gonna have two commanders but you don't have to right you could definitely share with your hit yep. captain yeah, and so I think if you're if you're looking for something again, because it's tier nine, it has really healthy like economy, like all these tier nine boats that are we're talking about, um, you you're gonna have like really good earnings on them. They all come with built-in economic bonuses. So uh, this is if you're trying to farm credits or commander XP or free XP, and you're throwing econ bonuses on tier nines, just do that better, right? They have better economy than tier tens. So going out and playing nines allows you to build up some of your mm -hmm. resource stores. And again, when you're thinking about like, what do I get out of this ship? Well, it's a different play style than playing Rune or playing, you know, a uh, Hipper or playing, you know, ultimately Hindenburg in my opinion. Uh, but I, I really do think you know, it's pretty identical captain builds. I can't really think of a whole lot there that I would do between the two that was different. Um, you know, on yeah. the on the high points, yeah. and so I think you can use it as a trainer for that kind of stuff. And um, you know, it it offers a it offers a different play style in that it has larger guns with a with a lesser reload, and you're going to play it a little differently than those tech line ships. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Aegir's a it's a long standing classic too. It's been around for a long time. It's got a lot of fans um, because it's been around for so long. Right. I don't think you're going to see one in every battle or you don't see one in every battle that you log in and play. But it doesn't mean it's not a reliable ship that some people are really going to have a great time with, you know, slamming it in there really close, uh, being able to use the not not immediately. Right. Doing that early in a game is suicide for any large ship. But, but when the time is right, when you guys have started to break through on one side and you want to push in and make something happen, um, you can lean in there a little bit. Your guns are, are powerful. They can make a big dent in a big tar in big targets. You've got torpedoes on either side, like I think you mentioned already. But um, Aegir, there are moments where it's just exactly the, the right ship to have. It's a full back pushing through once you've broken the line, kind of. Um, and it can do um, it can do those things, even though you know she's she's getting old, she's getting on in years, that kind of a thing. Um, Who Jam here says Aegir is good for brawls. The smaller the brawl, the better. I'd agree. I, I I think it'd be fantastic in a brawl situation um, and again with fewer people to to pick on it um cons simultaneously um you could you could find yourself in a position where Aegir is uh Aegir can have a big impact um and you know again free ship right cold ships are great for that which is wonderful mm -hmm. uh helmet says wargaming gives away free tier nine premiums now to this year i think helmet you're just talking about ships that are coming out that are uh not like um uh, I think you were talking about the destroyer and stuff that came out this summer. But um, even mm -hmm. when you think about all these coal ships coming out, effectively those are free too. You just the mission you have to grind is getting enough coal, right? It's another way to think about coal ships in general. Mm -hmm. um, what is next? What does that say? Oh, Azuma. I get to talk about Azuma. You know that's actually good. So <laughs> Azuma uh, is a, a boat I have. Uh, oh my god, I got blurry. Let's see what happens. Psalm and Jaeger. Those are the two. Let's see if we can fix this camera. There we go. Um, Azuma is a boat I, I have long disliked uh, because I was such a big like Zhao fan and Yoshino and Azuma came out, I'll say relatively close to each other in terms of the grand scheme of wargaming history or World Warships history. Um, and so I've long said, why would I play Azuma when I could play Yoshino? Yoshino has torps um, and we'll talk about Yoshino. It's on this list a little bit later. Um, and I, why would I play either of those when I can play Zhao? Because Zhao has stealth and hits really hard. It's got great HE and sort of trolly armor that's harder to troll with nowadays that 457s and 460s are so prevalent. Um, and then this year I got Azuma B, 
and I had to play Azuma, I chose to play Azuma, to work through the mission so I could get the doubloons at the end of it. And I actually had a couple of good games in Azuma that I rather enjoyed, and I don't remember enjoying it back in the day. I remember getting deleted in it and, not, and wishing I had torpedoes constantly. Um, I still think if I was looking at Azuma or Yoshino, I'd still just go get Yoshino because it's a tier 10 and it brings torpedoes back to the table and they're kind of fun. We'll talk about it later and, and its capabilities. Um, uh, but uh, I think Azuma is probably more capable than I gave it credit for. You can farm a lot of damage in Yoshino. Great fire chance, big old three, I think 310 millimeter guns on Yoshino um, and, uh, and stuff. You do not want to be broadside in front of something with large guns or good penetration because you will absolutely suffer. But frankly, that's true of most cruisers. Um, if not all cruisers, frankly, with 457s, 460s. Um, Azuma, I would not make her my first choice for a tier 9 cruiser. I, I'd probably pick up Aegir first, because Aegir is just a little bit more interesting to me. But um, I, I don't know. Skata, where's your where's your needle on Azuma these days and in terms of the spectrum of um, got to have it to maybe not so great? Or what, what are some attributes of Azuma that stand out to you in terms of uh, making her interesting to discuss? Uh, you know, it's one of the ships of World of Warships. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, that is so available the, so, in the armory. <laughs> yeah, so like, so again, Azuma is the same design language, though. So, for newer players, uh, Azuma is a tier nine uh, super cruiser for IJN, right? The 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 Alaska was created in a similar Alaska, at least, was a real ship that the Americans, the United States, had. Again, another super cruiser, if you will, right at tier nine. So, I, I think at one point. Uh, the folks at Wargaming or uh, when they resign the game are like we're gonna make we're gonna try to make like one of these kind of ships for every nation at tier yeah. nine and they're all and a bunch of them are gonna be free XP ships and they're no longer free XP ships they're coal ships now but that's why I think Azuma exists Azuma is an oddball in that right around the time they made it not long after then they also produced the Yoshino which is a very similar looking ship with the same guns but at tier 10 with better reload and, and torpedoes, but basically is the same kind of design language, right? Yeah. And uh, so with Wazuma, you don't get torpedoes, you get these large 310s. They have very, um, very good HE alpha, but they have a relatively long reload. Um, they are relatively accurate. They have a pretty long range. Um, and they and the AP is also actually really good on this ship. I think, I think the AP gets slept on a little bit, um, but the AP is you know, relatively effective as well. Um, but, you know, as far as there's a lot, of, like we're talking these nines and tens, it's a long list of ships. Um, there's 24 coal ships at tier nine and tier 10. Uh, this is one of the world of warships, ships of world of warships. Yeah. Uh, do you want it? It's if, if you want a, in, 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 I hope you don't hear my, I have a timer. I'm timing myself on these. I don't want to talk about any of these for more than two minutes. <laughs> I am listening to um, your timer and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but, but like ultimately, like when you, when you look at like the list of these tier nines and these tier tens, um, if you're interested in, in, you know, having ships from Japan, there's only four coal ships from Japan. Two of them are Azuma and Yoshino. They play very much the same. If you're yeah. going to spend your coal, you should spend whatever it is, 15,000 more coal or whatever to get Yoshino. Just get the tier 10. I don't, the tier 9 is going to have better economy, but yeah, like, right. It is what it is. I don't know. The, the better economy is a thing, I guess. I don't know. I, uh, and, and this is something I have kind of the freedom to say because I've been playing World Warships for eight years. To me, the economy is not that important anymore. That's not true for all players. For me, I'm just looking for the ship that's the most capable, that's the most fun. So I have the freedom to go, I don't care about the economy, but it, that is a good point to bring up. The t tier nines have enhanced credit earnings, which we know for newer players is worth something. Yeah. Go get the tier nines when you can, because they're great it's for a, earning credits and things like that. It really is something not to overlook. It's a big deal to get a tier nine premium that you're comfortable in playing to farm credits and things of that nature, because when you're working through tech lines, you're always broke. 
constantly and, bro it's and so, so having long. having a good tier nine special premium ship like one of these that you're that you like playing yeah that you're that you're competent enough to go play in so that when you can you need to get away from the grind and go play one of these to build up your credit stores that's the real value in my opinion in these ships that's why I think they were free XP ships before. Now they're coal ships, but that's what I think you get most out of having an Aegir or an Azuma or an Awami or on this any of these tier nines on this page, right? I do not think Nostrashimi and Black fall into that category because they just cost too dang much. Right. But um, as a newer as newer players go, that's what a lot of these tier nines I think are value added for as being captain trainers and being credit earners. Yeah, uh, quite frankly. Yeah, Dead Horse earlier commented about the AP, which you mentioned as well. The AP is really good. Um, and when you have a nice flat broadside, you should switch shells. This is not a boat where you want to stay on the HE forever. Um, and he did say here, the H uh, Azuma has the highest HE alpha for a tier nine cruiser, I think still, question mark, question mark, question mark. I have not confirmed, but it does have good HE alpha. I will say that you often get 3,000 damage with Azuma or Yoshino constantly, frequently, but there are a lot of salvos you're going to get that are a lot better than that. And the better shot you are, the better you are. Japanese ships, including these two, are fairly accurate. They don't have tons and tons of dispersion. This is a big ship with big guns, so it's going to have some dispersion, but it, it's uh, it's yep. fairly easy on a larger target to land multiple ships. Um, I, don't I don't know if it has the best HE, uh, base, best HE alpha of, of all tier nines. I know that it is tied for the best he alpha of the boats we're going to talk about tonight with yeah. yoshino uh because <laughs> they're course. the same guns with the same shells it's the same and boat, the same yeah. number of barrels right so um yeah so at tier nine you know this the other ships you know carno and a gear um at tier nine have less he alpha than this ship does right that doesn't mean that they have less that doesn't mean this has the highest he dpm Although right, it might. Right. Actually, it probably does because those other ships don't have great DPM either, but is what it is. Right. Anyway, so that's Azuma. Um, she's available. Um, you can get her. Again, I, you know, I don't think, to be to be realistic about the ship, this is not near the top of my list of cool ships. If I was, even though I just recently played it, I just recently had a good time in it, um, you know, and, and enjoyed more or less my games in it. Um, I still don't think I would prioritize this above other boats. And we'll give some, we'll talk about some of that stuff as we go um, a little bit later on too. It looks like that's a Wami is our next boat. And we had somebody earlier say, um, I'm going to buy a Wami as my next coal boat. It was before we'd gotten into the discussion. I think it was Kilo maybe. Um, and Guberio just said, uh, I wanted to get a Wami because there's just not enough premium tier nine Japanese battleships in the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scott, why don't, why don't you talk us through premium tier nine battleships in Awami and this ship right. for cool. What do you, what do you think about Awami? Well, one thing I would start by pointing out in looking at what's available for coal in the battleship department is at tier nine and tier 10, there's only five ships there. Um, right. There's only eight that, total and five of them are at the tiers we're talking yeah. about today. And, and, and only one of them is the 10, uh, most, you know, there's four of the five that we're going to talk about tonight are at tier nine. Um, so for, for one thing, what I would point out is the ba battleship community, in my opinion, is underserved in coal boats. I believe Iwami is the most recently released of the coal battleships. Iwami's maybe a year old now. Um, yeah, about probably, maybe a little more. Yeah, maybe a little more. Uh, so Iwami uses the uh, hull uh, asset, re asset reuse. It uses the hull that was put together for uh, the Heisen, which was a a dockyard boat which is also very similar to the azuma hall at tier nine the tech line boat it has a more traditional turret layout as clyde's showing here right with uh, abxy turrets it has um 410 millimeter uh guns on it eight guns one thing i like about the iwami's main guns is that the the base reload is really low uh it's an eight gun battleship that doesn't punish you for being an eight gun battleship with by how it, and it has a 28 second base reload so um, you should build into the reload in slot six and you can push that reload down and that's great. Um, that feels good as a battleship player to reload more often. Uh, and the guns yeah. aren't bad. The guns are not like confetti cannons. This The ship has a 2.1 Sigma. It has a, uh, it doesn't have the best vertical dispersion at tier. It, it, in fact, overall, out of all the, out of all these coal battleships, it actually has the worst vertical dispersion. But that hmm. 2.1 Sigma counters that 
in that um, it's going to put the sh more of the shells are going to land to the middle of the vertical dispersion ellipse. Right, um, that's what shell, that sigma value yep. means. It's the likelihood of those shells yeah. to land in the and middle so of the ellipse. Yeah. Base range on this ship is like over 21. It's like 22. So you don't need more range. It's got great range. It also has the gimmick of having like 20 kilometer torpedoes, like the Shimakaze 20 kilometer torpedoes, I believe, um, that you can throw off each side, which are great. You know, when you're sailing around, this ship is a ship that I play at like mid ranges, uh, mid to long ranges, because it's accurate and because it's not exceptionally tanky. Like most Japanese battleships, it just doesn't, you don't, it's not a great brawler. Um, that right. said, right. Uh, when this ship, the ship came out, they sold it under the auspice that it had usable secondaries. I almost feel like we shouldn't yeah. talk about this anymore because maybe people uh, have forgotten, but it's part of the story. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, they still are. Like, as, as far <laughs> as the secondary battery goes, it has a bunch of, uh, of Japanese um, uh, small caliber uh, secondaries, which has a bunch of 100 millimeter secondaries. I'll zoom in. Let awesome. me show them to the people. Yeah, they look, they're, they're like the turrets off of like a, like a Harigumo. And it also has, um, some 155 turrets as you can see there on the back that are off of like a 155 mogami that's mogami and and so the the turret the the secondary accuracy on it um isn't bad it has okay horizontal dispersion which is like a big play into how secondaries hit if you play like a bunch of body modes co-ops asymmetric battles maybe operate i guess can you use tier nines and operations i don't think so so let's say you know co-ops yeah, build into the secondaries. Have a good time. The downside is the range never gets there. It, the as built, even with flags, it's like a ten and a half kilometer secondary. And if you take this ship into ten and a half kilometers and start brawling with real secondary battleships, you're gonna have a bad time because that armor scheme just doesn't support it. You're gonna get melted. I wanted to um, bring that up and show yeah. that off. So I, let me hide a couple of rows of this yeah. here. But so, I think the armor, like you say, is not really the toughest. And one thing they did add late in the cycle was this 50 millimeter deck, yeah. which is they, which is a nice feature. It keeps you from yep. dying. But it's they not thickened the deck. They thickened the deck a lot during development, which made it more uh, capable. Because uh, the original deck plating meant that you got farmed out by HE spammers very easily um, at range. It had nothing to do with brawling. It really had to do with just getting cooked by HE spammers, which it shatters a lot more shells than it used to. So all this, in all, yeah. I like Awami. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to talk any more about it. I've talked too long about it. But all in all, I like Awami. <laughs> if 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 you want a uh, Japanese battle a trainer battleship. I think it's perfectly acceptable to have the same kind of standard battleship build on this ship that you would use on Yamato or on the ships of that line. And it's, again, good economy at Tier 9. Um, good accurate guns with a nice reload and some fun gimmicks like the torpedoes. I think it's a relatively fun ship to play, but um, I, as the joke was said earlier, like, tell me more about the Tier 9 premium Japanese battleships, right? There's just so many of them. This just happens to be the one that you can purchase for coal. Yeah, and I'll you know I'll kind of hit a couple of the points you briefly talked about, but won't, like you like you said, we won't spend too much time on it. But uh, Iwami, um, you know, two point one sigma. You, we talked a little bit about what sigma is and how it's used in the math. Um, pretty much any ship over two point oh is considered pretty accurate. So two point one is a little bit of a cut above, uh, which is nice. You mentioned the torpedoes, twenty kilometer torpedoes. I showed the launchers; they're on the very back of the boat. They're very exposed. They can get knocked out. It does happen. Um, but those are the kinds of things where you just put those torps in the water all the time um, and, and you get extra damage. It's like you're getting free damage that you you mailed off, you know, a while ago, um, which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, and so I like like you said about the armor, she's not super, super tanky. You can't really wade in up close, um, but she can uh, she can deal with cruiser fire when angled. The deck helps with the like 152 high arcing stuff, keeps that from shattering so easily. Um, or keeps that from penning so easily. Um, so she's she's got some some strengths and some weaknesses there, which makes her fairly balanced. Um, I like as uh, I was about to say Azuma. I, I like uh, Awami well enough. I think it's a it's a decent pick for somebody who is starved for Japanese battleships. I just don't know how many of those people there are, right? Because there is enough of them um, in the world. And that brings us to the end of page one. I think we're making record time, Scott. And I think we owe it all to your timer. I think it's good. I, I do not think we're making record time, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep riding that timer and trying to keep my 
comments short on a lot of these. Sounds good. I'll try to do the same. We'll try to get comments from chat too, guys. So do throw questions. Uh, don't be bashful about that. Um, jumping on to our next page here. We got a few more nines for you. Kearsarge. Um, I think I had you just walk through Awami, so I can talk a little bit about Kearsarge. Kearsarge is the tier nine American uh, hybrid battleship. So she's a 12 gun battleship with the guns off of the tier eight North Carolina, if I recall. There may be some parameters with the shells that are slightly different, that kind of a thing, but rough idea of what the guns are like. So if you take the guns off of that North Carolina, you add a whole nother turret. You got 12 barrels of fury coming off of the Kearsarge and you can also launch some planes. Nope. Can you remind me, does Kearsarge have bombers or rockets? I think it has rockets, right? Rocket. Tiny they, Tim rocket. The planes. Tiny Tims. Yeah. I was confusing it with the Delaware. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so Kearsarge's rockets are punchy, man. You can get 10,000 damage rocket salvos with them. Um, you do need to learn how to keep your ship safe when you're flying away from it, um, which I, I actually liked Kearsarge a lot more than I thought I was going to, because rockets are a very accessible um, air armament, air ordnance to use. They're not hard to use necessarily. Um, and so it's a good introduction to hybrid ships if that's a thing you're with it, you're you know willing to consider. Um, Scott, uh, your thoughts about Kearsarge? Uh, I I get the feeling, if I remember right, that you're sort of a Kearsarge enjoyer to a certain degree. Is that true? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Kearsarge mechanically. I don't have a problem with the hybrid platform. Uh, you know, North Carolina guns, even on a tier nine, are fine because you're getting twelve of them. The guns are accurate enough. They have that heavy AP. So just as far as being a battleship goes, it's really kind of like driving around a Montana hull with these with this number of guns on it. They're just not quite as good as Montana's. Right. Um, but then you have that tumor in the middle that you can launch planes from. And that's really the downfall of the ship because um, that tumor is all considered superstructure and it just soaks damage. And so if you're fighting a Kearsarge or really any hybrid battleship, shoot that. Shoot there. <laughs> Especially shoot that cruisers. Thing a lot. Cruisers if you're in a D, yeah. If you're yeah. in a cruiser, if you're in a DD, shoot that, shoot that a lot. It eats damage. And God <laughs> help you if a Venezia shows up. I I have taken so many huge slaps from from sap based cruisers in that tumor. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. You're like, oh please stop. It's just so bad. Um, but that said, this is an interesting ship. It was the first of the American hybrids. It wasn't the first hybrid we had. I believe that was Issei. Correct. Um, yeah, that's true. But but as far as the higher tier hybrids, um, this is the first American one. Um, and again, the planes that launches uh, deploy Tiny Tim rockets. When we say Tiny Tim, that's because that's what they're called. It means that each plane only fires like, I think it's only like four rockets per plane. So you don't get a massively huge rocket salvo. They are still HE rockets. They are not AP rockets, uh, but they have pretty strong pen and they light a lot of fires. I find the best targets for those rocket launches is other battleships. Yes, um, that's, was, striking, that's been my experience too. Striking other battleship superstructures with them. And that goes for all of the carrier planes that have Tiny Tims. Mm -hmm. um, you don't put out enough rockets and they don't fire quick enough. There's a long uh, machine gun period. Uh, so it's hard to hit destroyers with you them need unless, a you're big, really, unless you're really target. scaled. Yeah, yeah. But it's really good at, at smashing another battleship and causing fires and stuff. But yeah, I think Kearsarge is fun. If you're interested in the hybrid play style, uh, I think it's fun. Uh, yeah. Again, you can use it as a trainer for the American hybrid split. Um, even yeah. though those have bombers and not the rocket planes, the the way those ships play is very similar in that you're playing at mid to long ranges and you're flying these planes around, right? So... Yeah, um, I think... but yeah, I think I think it's a fun ship. It's kind of an interesting ship, and it's not it's not a bad battleship either. It's a good battleship. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one kicks the crap out of the Nebraska. It's way better boat than Nebraska is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will not hear any arguments to the contrary. Um, you know, versus Delaware, it's different. I like the guns on both of those ships, to be honest with you. Um, but I do mm -hmm. like the guns on Kearsarge quite a bit because I like the guns on North Carolina, and this is just a boat that has more of them. Um, I don't know if I think that Delaware is more or less powerful than Kearsarge. Uh, I know, you know, we're trying to move along, but uh, your yeah. thoughts on it. Do you have a preference between Delaware um, and Kearsarge? I like Kearsarge's 
because you have 12 guns on Kier Sarge and on like Delaware you only have 10. Yeah. Um, but on, on Delaware you have Iowa guns and on Kier Sarge you have North Carolina guns, but I don't find a huge difference there. So I actually think I prefer the gun weight salvo from Kier Sarge over Iowa. Or not Iowa, but over, over Delaware. Yeah, Delaware. Delaware is the one that has that rear rear turret that's only like two barrels, if I remember right, too. It's, it's like either the a two, two front... and a... Yeah, there's a two I think barrel the two, and a... I think the two front turrets are both threes, and then the rear turret's like a two or something. Because on Louisiana, it. the rear turret's like a four, which is crazy. All right, here's, um, here's Delaware. I'll put it up. So yeah. it's three, three, and two. You're right. Yeah, three, three, yeah. and two. So it's actually only um, eight guns. Yeah, and so that part of it sucks. Um, and but you know, and it's and the hull is more like an Iowa hull, and that's different than you yeah. know, Kearsarge, Kearsarge kind of has more of a Montana hull. But anyway, I I think between the two, as far as battleships go, I like Kearsarge better, but I do prefer the planes on Delaware. Um, I know those yeah, planes, have, although I, I will say that those planes have all been nerfed a whole lot since I probably played them a lot. And so I may feel differently <laughs> if I played it recently. The reticle got bigger on them because they were nuke yeah. and destroyers. And that was yeah. a patch that happened shortly after those came out. Um, and I, as a destroyer player, I'm very pleased that they got nerfed. Um, I think you can still hit a lot of the targets that genuinely make sense for those the tech line. Um, so I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about the tech line necessarily, but yeah. for people who are curious, like, hey, why don't I just play Delaware? Um, you totally could, and you could be very happy playing Delaware. Um, Louisiana is a really strong ship too, so um, don't think that you have to get the Colwyn right away. Um, if you if you do get it, though, I think for people who like battleships and for people who like hybrids, it's a good group ship for both of those groups, even if you don't really love hybrids um, or, or don't think you would love hybrids. It's a good one, I think, to yeah. try potentially. What I what I would consider is that if with three tech line American battleship lines, if you only have one of them done, and let's presume it's not the hybrid line, yeah. if you have Montana or if you have Vermont or you're working on one of those lines, your Sarge is a good trainer really for either of those just as far as battleshipping goes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the plane thing. But even if you don't really even use the planes, it's not a bad American battleship. If you have, yeah. if you've gone up the side that has Kansas and Minnesota and Vermont, Kier Sarge is a lot more like North Carolina, Iowa, and Montana, right? If you have, if you've got North Carolina or Iowa or, or Montana, Kier Sarge again plays similar to those. It has this, you know, similar play style as far as how the ship moves around and the gun weight and all that stuff. So, um, and and if you want to know what it's like to play the hybrids without going up the hybrid line, you can get that from Kier Sarge. So without um, having to play it, the Colorado yeah. again. <laughs> right without having to play colorado over and over and over and so yeah. if you and, and if you don't have any american battleships this happens to be the only one you can get for coal so enjoy yeah yeah it's kind of you're limited there aren't you uh, which is pretty good um let's jump on to tulsa now i happen to know you have some opinions about tulsa um yeah. why don't you kick us off tulsa here it is uh, we'll talk about it yeah, Tulsa is a, uh, uh, again, Tier 9 American cruiser, uh, ostensibly a heavy cruiser due to guns, the gun caliber of 203 millimeters. Uh, Tulsa is a, uh, I guess it's like a mini Des Moines, but it doesn't, it just doesn't have what makes Des Moines great. Uh, it only has six guns. It's I don't like six gun anything. Maybe destroyers with six guns. But like, sure, that's very it's, standard, it's a, right? <laughs> a six a six gun cruiser where you only have four barrels forward. Um, the reload isn't epic. Like Des Moines' reload is epic. This has a similar reload, but because of the the lack of guns, this needs to have like a two second reload to feel great to me, and it doesn't. Five point one um, seconds in yeah. sitting here in my port, right? Yeah, and it doesn't have the armor schema that that Des Moines has, so it's a lot harder to play as Des Moines. Um, if you don't have the American heavy cruiser line, uh, the tech line, maybe you're interested in how that plays. I would highly recommend you you save a few more coal and just buy Salem. Yes, um, I think so too. I, and so this ship is odd to me. It has it has radar, has hydros, might have defensive AA. I don't remember. I I I don't really like Tulsa very much. I played it recently on stream. I hadn't played it in a long time. Um, I had a I had I had a nice game in it, uh, but I, I couldn't carry. 
I could not carry out in it because I was matched against an Alaska. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if you're going to yeah. play a tier nine American premium cruiser, I recommend Alaska over Tulsa. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard when you look at what you're matched against as far as tier nine cruisers go. In my opinion, there's not a lot of cruisers that I wouldn't rather play than Tulsa. Tulsa is not high on my personal list of tier nine premium cruisers. Yeah, I uh, I got Tulsa Vanna Crate, I think. I didn't buy it for coal, but I did pick it up at one point or, or, or wind up with it on my account. And um, I had never really played it because I'm not a I'm not a big American heavy cruiser fan anyway, which I know is almost sacrilege for for many on on the stream or, or watching on YouTube later. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, but I had somebody choose it for me or maybe our Selectomatic random chooser picked it. Um, and I had a, a reasonable game in it recently, but I was overrun by many, many ships. But I was impressed by what the guns could do. But the the bow in armor is not quite as Des Moines as Des Moines is, um, which is kind of too bad. And certainly the the DPM forward is, you know, two thirds that of Des Moines, let's say, assuming the fractions are all things are equal, which they're mm. probably not perfectly. Um, Agree with your sentiment. I mean, Salem's available and it's not much more, right? So for another yeah. 20,000 coal or whatever, whatever it winds up being, you can get a Salem. And if you use a coupon, it's it's three quarters of that. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't. Brand, so. I don't think Tulsa's better than Buffalo. And Buffalo is the tech tree uh, tier nine heavy cruiser. And and Buffalo has a longer range radar because Tulsa has like the light cruiser radar range for whatever reason. Yeah, it's got um, a nine kilometer I, radar. You know, and, and so like I, I have a hard time, you know, saying, ah yeah, this ship is this is why this ship is better or interesting than other ships available, premium or not. Um I suppose the dream of playing against tier sevens is is the one magic there. But you yeah. as you said earlier, you can do that in Alaska. You good know. luck. You're gonna good luck. If you if you if you <laughs> I said the dream if you play yeah, it's if you dream. play this and you play this and you match up against a uh, 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 tier seven. Good on you. Uh, uh, but when you play this and you Take have to that shoot a Duke uh, of York, you yeah. Know, when like... you have to shoot a when you have to get in a gunfight with a Conde in it, it's not a good time. Yeah, game over, man. Yeah. It's not great. Um, yeah, uh, Grant does say get good luck getting an Alaska for coal though. Got to agree with that. Um, you know you're not going to get an Alaska for free. Uh, no, you're not. And uh, Brand says, tough sail, tough sell for the old Tulsa this stream. Agreed. I, I mean, I don't think Tulsa's terrible. I just think there are better choices for not much more coal, right? And yeah, some I, other better choices maybe for the same amount of coal. So Yeah, I just as easily, I know it's a different tier, but just if you want, a, you just get Salem. Yeah. It's a little it's, bit more coal. We'll talk about it soon. Yeah, but we'll just get to that. Salem shortly. Um, I think I had you kick off Tulsa, but do you want to kick off Carno too? You've got a lot more games in Carno than I do. Yeah, so Carno is a premium tier nine French uh, super cruiser again in that same vein that we've talked about with Azuma and A gear, right? This is a large cruiser with large caliber guns. Uh, the gun caliber is three hundred and five. Again, very similar. Azuma's got three tens. A gear's got three hundred five. Alaska has like three hundred five, right? So you can see this is kind of a design language thing, right? Carno to me always has this look of a cruise ship. Uh, it's a very large ship. It's kind of cumbersome. <laughs> kind of cumbersome. Yeah. Um, interesting guns in the fact that you see that forward forward battery has got a three barrel turret and a four barrel turret, and then um, in the back you've got a, a another three barrel turret if memory serves. So so you you have uh, a ten gun uh, loadout here. Um, reload may, that to balance that the reload's longer than Azuma's. Uh, it's got a longer reload. Um, I do I do like playing uh, Carno, but that's probably a rare thing. This ship came out before the split of French cruisers that occurred that ends in the Marseille, right. um, and right. so. I believe this ship, and we see this a lot in World of Warships, I believe this ship is kind of a test for the concept of what if we made a large French cruiser that has kind of like battleshipy guns. Um, this ship is not as, I, I would I would say that I like this ship better than the Techline Tier 9 Breast, but it is not better than 
I just personally like it better than. Um, right. It's uh, hard to compete but, with the reload booster the tech line has, right? And right. this does not Yeah, have and that. that's the problem, right? I, I like playing this ship at range and kiting as if you're a French cruiser. She does have a um, speed boost, 20% speed boost. She does have hydros, right? Yeah, and she's got a pretty good HE alpha, although not as good as Azuma's. But I would rather play this ship than Azuma because for me, I'm less susceptible to get uh, Citadels in this ship than I am in Azuma for whatever reason that has... French trolley armor that works for me. Um, again, this ship though is big and clunky and not really, a, I don't think very popular at all. Um, no, I, it's, it's really I have, not. It's really not. I have a, I probably have a relatively comically large number of games in it for my port <laughs> and, and I don't have a lot of games in any one ship. Yeah. Um, and so I, but I have played this ship a fair amount and I do like this ship, but that's, that's my unique opinion on it. I don't necessarily think it's for everybody. What, why would you get it? Economy. Um, Cruiser captain trainer for the Marseille line. Um, those are really right. kind of the only. Right. Those are really kind of the only reasons I think you would get it. You're Collector. from France, you know. Yeah, you reasons, collect ships. Reasons that you would get it. Yeah, I, yeah, I look at Carno, and Carno was one that for me um, for a long time I was like, I don't know why I would buy that. I, again, I'm, I I style myself as a destroyer main, a destroyer fan. Although I do play a lot of everything these days. Um, but I, and I remember seeing Carno come out, and I was like, I like that it's got a speed boost, but I don't like that it's the size of Greenland. You know, it's huge, um, easy to hit was my theory. Um, but you do you do tend to see players who take this one out. They stay at range. The range is over 18 kilometers, not quite 19. Um, they'll stay at range. Uh, they'll use a lot of HE in it. You talked about the HE alpha. I think that's definitely a popular uh, yeah. ordinance to use here. Uh, the AP. I've only played it a couple of times. The AP seems to work. You, you would yep. you agree? You should use the AP yeah. at times. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, it's got good AP, and it's and the the ballistics are good, right? Because it's French. It doesn't right, have like sh right. like really floaty, crappy shells. Like it's it, and the, they're accurate. It's not a dis, <clears throat> it's not an inaccurate battery. It's got ten guns, and unlike the tech line, because it has rear turrets, it's better for kiting away with, in my opinion, than That's the kiting play style, right? That's true. And so, like I like when I've had really strong games in this ship, it's kiting at maximum ranges dragging people away much like how i would play henry yeah um or 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 even san louis or even charles martel it's just in a much larger but a much game, larger form you know, factor <laughs> much larger form factor that doesn't have torpedoes yeah. and and has a long reload and isn't really great if you end up in a situation where uh something's really close to you that has more dpm right it's <laughs> that part of it's kind of frustrating so it's it's definitely an acquired taste um yeah i do like it i do like it better than tulsa i would I rather play it than azuma I but those are like probably those are probably not too. those may not be common sentiments and azuma is probably a better ship you think it is that's interesting to think about i don't i don't, I don't know probably if it is. is i don't know if it is or not um helmet says french ap is bitey Flamin Hooligan says, I like that camo though. And I think you were talking about the blue one I switched, I showed also comes in blue. Um, uh, and then uh, Snowmongi says, ho, 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 in Jean Bart, which is true. Uh, Jean Bart, of course, uh, also difficult to get unless you get in the JBB, um, but uh, another great French boat. I mean, there's a lot of French ship fans out there. This might be one of the lower ones on the list of amazing French boats to get. However, um, for folks who are fans of French boats, it's certainly available. You know, I, I don't know that this one rises to the top of the list either necessarily, but um, it's out there and I think it does have a couple of secret fans, um, you know, maybe not so secret, right? You just told everybody you're a fan. Yeah, uh, I mean, but it doesn't it, have, it a, has, I mean, people are going to be like, why not Marseille though? You know, and it, or, it or has Brest. more, it has a lot more games on NA than Tulsa. Does it? Well, but Tulsa it, hasn't been out but as it, long. Yeah. It also has 100,000 less games on NA than Brest. And Breast has oh not been out here, and Breast is free. Yeah. So well, and the free helps, right? It, it's, you know, it, it's right around the Azure Lane Azuma as far as games played, right? It's as oh far gosh. as tier nine cruisers go. It's not, you know, it's got 120,000 <laughs> randoms logged. It's not, so not overtly popular, but but Tulsa only has 73,000. So it is more popular than Tulsa, um, right. but it's not extremely popular, right? Azuma has. For comparison, Azuma has 665,000 randoms logged. Obviously, it's been out longer, but that's a lot. That's like five times as many games. So Right, right. Anyway. So it's just, it just, it isn't one that really took off and made people love, love no. 
Um, no. Which is, uh-huh. which I guess gives you some some hipster street cred if you go for it. I, what's weird is I think we both, I, or at least I don't, I don't have a dislike for Carno, whereas I've kind of developed a dislike for Azuma, which recently faded slightly. I got to admit. So Carno is just kind of what it is, and I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I think it's an odd boat that doesn't sell particularly well. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe you'll find out you love it, but yeah, when you're looking for the back of the box feature that makes you go, oh hell yeah, I gotta get this. I don't know what it is, right? It's there just isn't one. It's just another cruiser, I guess. All right, I'll talk about Marco Polo. We talk about Marco Polo every time we do this, and we always say kind of, I don't know what this boat's about. So Marco Polo is an Italian battleship. She's got 406 millimeter guns. She's got sap and AP. She does not have the smoke that makes Italian battleships interesting. And I think that's kind of where the story ends with Marco Polo. Um, Nine guns, let me, uh, I can bring it up on the screen here and kind of walk you around it. Um, She's got the cool barber pole, Marco Polo camo. Uh, nine guns, six up front, three out back. Marco Polo is, as near as I can tell, an Italian battleship. And I, at that point, I'm kind of done describing her. I, If I wanted to get an Italian battleship at Tier 9, this is not the one I would go for. We've got Giuseppe Verdi that exists in the world. And here she is. Scotta, can you help me describe this boat in a way that gives it a personality? Marco Polo has the largest guns up and until recently of any Italian battleship. Ruggiero Loria. This is the true. Unreleased steel battleship has larger guns. It has 457s, right? Up and until that, though, this had the largest guns. And they are SAP. They don't you have SAP and AP. This ship doesn't have smoke. All the like all the other ones have the fuel smoke. This one didn't. Why? I still don't know. I think they should retcon it, but whatever. What I will say about this ship is that this ship, while I don't like it, and it isn't a ship I reach for, and it's a ship that I think they retconned themselves when they released Giuseppe Verde, which uses the same hull, but has sap secondaries and crawling smoke and is brawly. Yeah. What I will say about this ship is that in, in, that in the Tier 9 clan battles season, this ship, when other ships like Musashi got banned... This ship was extremely overpowered for top end clans to use because the 406 millimeter sap that this ship put out was devastating. I was going to uh, just bring up some facts about that, but keep going. Was, yeah. was devastating and competitive. And top tier clans who had it knew that and used it for that purpose because it does have good armor and they didn't care if it had smoke because they're they're top end clans that they don't care and well, they, when things they like other ships that brought smoke for right it, right and Stuff when like things that. like when things like musashi got banned in tier nine clan battles for being overpowered uh this ship filled that gap for a lot of those clans admirably and and the ap doesn't the ap velocity is really good too and has high yes, pen but yes. that sap that 406 millimeter sap is crushing just not against dds because dds get it out but it crushes cruisers. And in clans, when there's a battleship and a bunch of cruisers, this 406 millimeter sap was very powerful. Yeah. The the 12 kilometer penetration of the sap is 102 millimeters. And it doesn't matter base. It almost doesn't matter what angle you hit it. It does have a ricochet angle at 70 to 80 degrees. Um, but 102 millimeters, you drop those on the deck through the superstructure, wherever you're going to pen stuff. That's similar to the AP penetration of Malta bombs. So if you're familiar with those, which I think a lot of us are by now, um, those Malta AP bombs pen the same as this sap. If we push it up to 18 kilometers, the the penetration doesn't change, uh, which is really uh, pretty powerful. It's one of the things about sap, whereas AP penetration does change. The flight time, 12 kilometer flight time is 5.8 seconds for those sap shells. You did mention that, so I started doing some research. That is equivalent to the fastest AP shells that exist on battleships at tier nine in World of Warships. So slow shells are like 7.2, 6.8, 5.8 being uh, tied for number one as the fastest. So you tend to hit what you click on, you've got the pen to do it and you can do it at any angle. And, and I'm glad you brought up the 406 millimeter mains because a lot of those were 380s or 381s, right? That's like what the, uh, 
uh, the Lepanto is the tier nine there. It's 381 millimeters. And that means you have an extra five or six or eight millimeters of pen. Um, and it looks like it's five millimeters of pen um, with the extra size of the guns. And that can make the difference on the right target. So yeah. that's, that's interesting about the competitive though. Yeah, 1.9 Sigma, 96 meter vertical dispersion, very similar to Kearsarge in that regard. Um, but with an extremely better shelf flight time and that 406 millimeter sap is really crushing. Do I like this ship personally and do I run around and play it in, in randoms? No. Um, <clears throat> could I and be fine with it? Probably. Um, I don't play any of the Italian battleships in randoms though. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I uh, This one at least has accurate guns. Most, most tech line Italian battleships have confetti cannon Sigma. Uh, this one at least isn't that bad, but it right. just doesn't intrigue me. Um, but again, there are some there are some benefits to having this ship in your port if you're a battleship player. Uh, it's the only Italian battleship on this list, and it does have pretty pretty powerful SAP uh, ordnance. That SAP salvo, if you were able to land all the shells, is 100 almost 127 thousand damage. Right, that's the alpha on it. It's insane. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but the reload is god awful base reloads really long 36 seconds is it 36 um, i was thinking it was yeah. 32 wow that's yeah, worse than i thought it's just punitive um, we'll have to same take problem it out sometime we'll take it same out on problem stream. to be fair kearsarge has that same terrible reload but at it least does. it has it has 12 guns right so um you know it is what it is but uh interesting ship it just when you when you think about italian battleships and when this was introduced everything else that was came coming out when this came out had fuel smoke and this one didn't and it was like what are they doing like why doesn't this have fuel smoke why would you know and it just, just doesn't you know it's like well is it more like playing um roma is the it trying original to be like a roma? one well no because it has sap like and it's kind of mm -hmm. it's just kind of weird and it doesn't have like a whole lot going on for it, you know, in the consumable department, it is, you know, uh, heal, uh, spotter or fighter plane. Those are your choices. It's very vanilla. So, yeah. um, but, uh, it does have some ability, I think. And I do think like in maybe in a, in a, in smaller settings, brawling, rank i wonder if ranked um, would be a good like place that. to take marco polo yeah i think in a situation where you can pummel cruisers with that 406 sap is where it's going to shine but you're going to be hindered by that reload yeah i'll have to take it out on stream sometime i've played it a handful of times and i didn't really find it particularly special um but it's definitely one that because i haven't spent time with it it's time to go back and try it again right i yeah. i do that every now and again for some ships at least there's so many boats in the game that it's hard to do it for all of them but um, Dutch Eagle and Flyer says, there's a reason why many streamers have most of the Italian BBs on the chat cannot request this list, um, which I guess I haven't really thought about, uh, but that's funny. Uh, A Dostal says, it's easy to spot the Reds just have to shout Marco, and then it can't resist shouting Polo back. I'm sorry I read that out loud. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but I think maybe, uh, I think maybe that's probably enough on Marco Polo. Definitely, you know, if the things we talked about are intriguing to you, Marco Polo could be an interesting ship. You know, I think Scott are talking about the tier nine competitive, uh, thing where that became a ship that got pulled in with other bands occurring. That's probably a fairly rare instance. I don't know that I would count on that and make that a thing that I was buying Marco Polo just in case they ban all my favorite ships. Um, however, I think, uh, you know having it maybe trying it out in ranked or something is a, is an opportunity so maybe i'll if there's an opportunity for me to take it into tier 9 ranked at some point i'll do that sure. we'll see how she goes z44 is a tier 9 german destroyer clyde you like playing destroyers why don't you tell us about it i have it up on the screen already let me bring it up so the crowd can so the people at home z44 now scotta you like this boat uh, you liked it first and i tried it and i said not bad because i didn't have it when you first started telling me about it this was a german destroyer when it came out everybody said why is there a german gd with party, no hydros that seems like a thing i don't want um thanks for the follow there pegasus um and and I think it kind of got a bad rap fairly early on. This is a more torpedo focused destroyer. She does have five guns. Um, you were talking about the AP DPM and HE DPM in comparison to the Neustra Shimmy a little bit earlier and how this one's AP DPM. Did you say it was just better or just worse than Neustra's? I think it was just better. Just yeah, barely? I think both of it's were better. Yeah, got, very, very know, close. Better, similar reload and five guns, right? And so like, you mm -hmm. know, with German so quarter pen and stuff like that. Right, so like its guns are not worthless. 
um, but uh, they're definitely not what it's about. It has a pretty fast torpedo reload, um, which in my build is about 72.3 seconds. That's actually without a commander on there. Let me see. Still, for my build, it's uh, my commander's untrained because I just reset them all. Um, so 72 seconds, you can probably improve that, or you can improve that with commander stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, the guns, I don't think they're useless. I think uh, you do get that German quarter pen, which you just mentioned, which means your uh, HE is going to pen 32 millimeters of armor, which is enough to get through quite a few ships in the game. Um, and then, of course, your AP, German AP, tends to be fairly punchy as well. Um, that's worth doing. 4.2 second reload on the... Uh, the ship again without a trained commander on it at the moment um, and, and reasonably stealthy the concealment I have 6.5 but I again untrained commander so we can bring that down another 10% it'll be just under 6 kilometers um, Scott when you were first playing this boat and you said I kind of like Z44 what was it that kind of helped you turn the corner and you go you know what this boat's okay for me what what was the positive there yeah I mean if you've got detractors what are those two I, you know, when I when I first got it and was playing it, what I liked about it was that it was it is more, in my opinion, a torpedo focused uh, mm -hmm. destroyer, and I like um, for the most part I like torpedo focused destroyers, or I did at that time. Yeah. Um, you know, when I look at my Z forty four with with a a captain that's that's designed, you know, set up with a lot of torpedo based stuff, like I'm running, you know, concealment and swift and silence and all the torpedo stuff. I'm not running any gun stuff on this captain. It's it's that's a downside because it's really kind of a unique captain setup for this. Um, you know that that brings the torpedo reload for mine down to 65 seconds on on two by five right, launchers with a 12 kilometer range. Now the torpedoes don't have an amazing alpha. They're better than European torpedoes, but they're not as good as say like IJN or American torpedoes. Um, but yeah. I I think when I was playing the ship a fair amount and it, it not. Don't take this the wrong way. People are going to hear this and they're going to blow up. But like this to me at the time felt kind of like, well, we have Benham at home. Like mm. people don't, people can't get Benham, which has a lot of torpedoes that reload often at the tier. This ship is not an analog for Benham. No, half so as many take, launchers, right? But... Yeah, but don't take me the wrong way. But it, because it has about a 60 second torpedo reload and 12 kilometer torpedoes and, and, and as built for me a 5.9 conceal, um, you can cruise around and chuck torpedoes and play in that fashion, right? You're playing as a torpedo boat, which I enjoy about it. I don't play much with the guns, but if you smoke up, it does have normal German smokes, so not long smokes, not short smokes. It does have a speed boost, which is nice. Uh, Sheena Busta, you know, with 8%. It gets around and does stuff, and and I and I like what it is. When the ship came out, extremely unpopular with everybody who knows better because it has no hydros. It's not like the, at the time the Elbing line didn't exist, right? And right. this was not like the Z fifty two line. Where's the hydros? I don't understand. And I remember you can go find videos of all the CCs back then, being like, rawr, rawr, this doesn't do what the other ones do. Why would yeah. I ever buy a different right. kind of boat? Right, and, and what I like yeah. about it is that it doesn't do what the other ones do. There really isn't a this is a ger this is a torpedo focused German destroyer, and there isn't another one in my opinion. Um, and so I like that about it. Is it the best torpedo boat at tier nine? No, it isn't. Hello, um, Yugumo and friends. Like there's a and yeah, Venom, and right? there's a bunch of good torpedo boats, right? Sure, sure, but I but I enjoyed playing it for what it was. Uh, and I haven't played it in a long while, but if I did, I would still enjoy it for what it is. Um, and yeah, sometimes that's sure. enough. Sometimes that's enough. Uh, but, you know, the downside of it, it is not a captain trainer for the Z-52 line. Nope. It is not a captain trainer for the Elbing line. It's not you a captain really, trainer for any of that. Yeah, for it's, a, it, it's, or... it's a captain trainer for another tech line because you take your cruiser captain or your battleship captain yep. and you put you put them on it and this is and you make a special torpedo destroyer captain build that use on this to xp that captain for a non-destroyer line you could Which... be your carrier german carrier captain or something right you know german submarine captain exists now it just can't be the z52 captain or the elbin captain because the builds are so wildly different but in and a that kind of that's, not that's a kind bad, of a problem it's not really a bad thing though because it can nope. you know now if rather than having this 
train your Z-52 captain, maybe you're more of a battleship player, you put this on your Schlieffen captain, you put this on your Luchens, right? Yeah. And now you're leveling Luchens faster. Like, it, it's a pro oh, and yeah. a con kind of at the same time, really. Germany Germany is a nation that is not replete. Uh, it has tons of tech lines, right? It's It's got two battleship lines, it's got a cruiser line, it's got two destroyer lines, it's got a submarine line, it's got a carrier line. You've got plenty of need to train tech tree captains. You you if you play all of those, you certainly have a captain that can be torpedo focused that is for this dumb boat. Just like totally. I would say if you so have easy. ZF6, the former uh, dockyard destroyer, you would probably have a special ca captain for it. Yeah. It's, you know, different. So um you know, that's okay. Um, but that's probably the downside for somebody that doesn't have a just mountain of different German ships that the German ship lines they're working on. They might struggle if they're like, I'm playing, I'm playing the Z-52 line and I got this boat for coal and, you know, you're trying to use more of a hybridized captain build on it or you're using a gunboat captain build on it from the Elbing line and that doesn't make sense here and that would be a problem. That would really make this yeah. boat, you would not get the best out of this boat. Agreed. Yeah, it is. You know, we've been talking about how it's different and that means it needs a different captain because it's different enough. Right. And so that is a thing. Again, you know, looking for that silver lining, you can use it to train your Hindi captain, your Schlieffen captain, the captain destined for anything but Z-52 or Elbing. And you'll be very happy in that way. But if you're, again, like you say, limited uh, on those lines that you're working or interested in, then, yeah, you know, you're going to be um, you're going to find that it is different than your other German destroyers. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's Z-44, Scott of the Pomern. The Pomern. It's a pom Pomern real popular when it came out because it's a German battleship with a lot of secondaries and torpedoes and hydros, and it did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, this boat came out before Schlieffen existed. Um, it's a Freddy de Grossa, the Tier 9 German tech tree ship hull, which is relatively tanky, and it has 12 guns that are um, German... Uh, 380 guns that are like the guns on like a Bismarck, but you got 12 of them. It's got it these doesn't... little pods for carrying your baby Yoda in as well. Yep, you can see it's those got all these the things. Side. Yep, that's where you put your Grogu's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can like game theory the bejesus out of the ship, and I know we've talked about it on previous Cole Show videos a lot about captain builds for this needing to have IFHE because you have 105 millimeter sure, secondaries yeah. and blah, 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 blah. Generally, though, this ship is relatively good. It's relatively fun. It's very popular in modes like asymmetric battles or things like that because it's still, while not one of the German battle cruisers um, and the older main main German battleship line style ship, it's still a relatively fun brawling ship because it has torpedoes and it has hydros, and that makes it unique. Um, you know, Freddy doesn't have torpedoes. Uh, Something like Turpets, which is a Tier 8 Premium, doesn't have Hydros. Right. Um, so here you have Hydros, and you have Torpedoes, and you can build into the secondaries, and they have pretty good hitting power. Um, and it doesn't have terrible main battery. Uh, it's not amazingly overpowered at overmatching stuff, but it has a perfectly fine main battery with a lot of guns. The reload, you pay a penalty for having 12 guns on the reload. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's a relatively fun ship. It's been power crept since it came out, that's for sure. sure. But um, in brawls and things of that nature and ranked, I think it's still probably very playable. Um, I'm probably a bad person to vouch for that, though, because I don't I haven't played those modes in a long time. So um, but all in all, if you're looking for a, a ship that you can probably use as a mainline German battleship trainer, I think Pomeran can do that on its way to Preussen. Yeah, it could. Um, um, you like know, and I and I think that's okay. Yeah, I like the twelve guns. You know, you do pay for it a bit with the reload. What is the reload base? I have thirty three seconds without a commander yeah. in mind, right? Um, so thirty three seconds, you know, which isn't fast, but twelve guns is a lot of punch. Uh, they are three eighties on there, so same size as Turpits and Bismarck, that kind of a thing. <laughs> um, you mentioned briefly, and I think you kind of came back around on it a little bit. This came out before. 
the Schlieffen line. It came out before the advent of long range torpedoes with hydros on a German battleship. That was mm -hmm. not really a thing before. And so like you talked, the hydros and torpedoes at the same time was such a great mix. Um, you've got both of those. They only go six kilometers, uh, but that does make this ship a lot of fun. And there are modes where she's really, she really is fun to play because she's a blunt instrument. You stuff it into a place that makes it uncomfortable for your enemies. And then you've got torps coming off both sides and secondaries going everywhere. Um, and away it goes, right? It, uh, it does good things. Um, Palmer is not what she once was. She was very, she, this was everybody's darling when it came out. Like, and of course, with the advent of those newer tech line cru uh, battle cruisers, uh, the Schlieffen Lion um, and the, the tier nine there, the tier seven, to a lesser extent, the Zeton, um, those are all really popular ships that have kind of taken all of the fanboys from Pomeran and they've, they've migrated over there. That doesn't mean Pomeran's not still fun and useful. She's a tier nine cool. premium ship. Get together, uh, have a that can, uh, thank you for the subscription, DB Cooper. And uh, Tsurevna, you're very welcome for the Kitakami spreadsheet. Thank you. Um, and then she she's still a tier nine ship with all the improved economy and that kind of stuff. She's a captain trainer for Preussen, like you said. I, I think Pomeran's uh, is a fun boat, and I think there are modes where she gets to be brought back out again, and people enjoy those memories with her again. You know, and and, and you can still play it in randoms too. I'm not saying you should avoid random battles with this boat, but. Um, but there are more boats, like you said, that have power crept her over the years. I do think if you're a German battleship fan and you're looking at the list of coal boats, um, this is the this is the one to get. Uh, is this the only German battleship on the list, Scott? No, Grosser Kurfürst oh, Kurf is there as well. There as and well. so I I probably would say get Grosser Kurfürst at this point first because it's a tier ten. But sure. Um, and, and, and so that and that's unfortunate. But um, you know when Pomeran came out, like you said, it was it was special. It was so special. Everybody loved it. It, so it came out at the same time as a tier nine brawls three v three season, and I just used the bejesus out of the ship and this ship and that, and it was so good. <laughs> it was so good because you could pick up guys with hydros and the with IFHE the secondaries would melt thirty two millimeter battleships, uh, and and then when they had to push into you because you were just trashing with secondaries, you had the torpedoes, and it was just so much fun. Um, and I'll always remember that about it, and never regret the purchase of it because of that you'll always but, have paris you know like <laughs> right but nowadays <laughs> your love affair with Palmer you know nowadays it, it just then like you know like what is it like Prinz ruprecht the tech line ruprecht battlecruiser so one good. it's not as tanky as this but it's just right. better it's just better probably and better so, range torps better hydros better, i think better main battery um yeah. more secondary hitting power much better concealment you know just on and on so um it is what it is it's a ship of a time i i don't think it's a bad ship to go get if you're interested in in a brawly german battleship play style obviously where a booze be where a booin but um it's not what it once was <laughs> where a booze are in the whereabouts of the uh of the palmer um so this is our last page of tier nines we're about to jump to tier tens um usually we go hey if you could pick three what would they be uh, from the tier nine list. I can show you both slides if that's helpful. Um, but on this list, it's Palmer and Z44, Marco Polo, Carno, Tulsa, Kearsarge. And then the previous page is Black, Neustrashimi, Groningen, Agir, Azuma, and Iwami. Maybe you want to pick like one. Or, if you have all three, you can show, shout them or we can go like one by one. Yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, if, I, I'll just pick three. I'll pick one from each class because we only represent three classes at this tier. Yeah. So um, as far as the destroyers go, I would take black, even though it's expensive. Um, I, mm. I think it has the, it's the most fun to play and has the most utility and can be used for the most stuff. Um, as far as the cruisers go, I'd take Cardo so, because I like Cardo the best out of those tier nine <laughs> cruisers. Uh, I don't like Azuma. And so I hang on, it's, like... it's Agir, Azuma, Carno, yeah. Tulsa. That's the four that you're choosing. Yeah, from. Tulsa can suck it. A gear, <laughs> I might take A gear over Carno, but I'd rather just I'd rather play Carno nowadays than A gear. Um, yeah. And I don't want to play Azuma. I never enjoyed playing Azuma. I just get dev struck in that thing. Uh, and as far as the battleship goes, so it's a Wami, Car or Wami Marco Polo Palmer. It's hard for me not to pick Palmer because of sentimentality. Mm. Um, I think. I don't know. Kearsarge is probably a oh, better Kearsarge battleship. Too, Kearsarge. Kearsarge is probably a better battleship nowadays. I don't think a lot of people like Awami, but I've played a lot of Awami. 
-hmm. So I don't know. I, I guess I'll still pick Palmer just because of sentimentality, but I don't know that it's the right pick. <laughs> no, but that's a, that's a good way to talk about this, right? Because like we talked at the top of the stream about how we want people to pick stuff that's fun or in this case was fun. You had a lot of good games, a lot of good memories in the boat. Whether or not it's necessarily the most current pick uh, is a great question. Um, you know, looking at the same list for destroyers, I can't disagree with you. I have to go with black. Um, I like Neustra a lot, and I've actually really enjoyed Groningen um, recently. Um, Z44 uh, is also on the list as well. It's just on the second page. Um, this is the, they're or sorted by price and Wargaming sorted them. I should have put all the DDs together, but that would have been more work. Um, but yeah, I think I gotta go with black, irrespective of price. Um, Groningen is probably the next most influential boat if you're trying to like influence games, things like that. The hydro is really strong, things like, uh, you know, you're giving up torpedoes, so not everybody's going to go for that. Um, I really like Neustra. I'd probably choose Neustra before Groningen, um, and then I'd probably put Z44 last. But I actually like all four of these boats well enough to be happy playing any of the destroyers on this list. When I switch to the cruisers, I kind of have the opposite experience. I'm a light cruiser guy. It's kind of the thing I enjoy to do. So when I look here and it's Aegir and Azuma, and then we jump to the Tulsa and um, Carnot page. I'm like, well, where's my light cruiser at? There just isn't one at uh, tier nine that we have in the coal ships list. I'd probably go for a gear, I guess. But honestly, I would just choose another destroyer because it's me. Uh, we'll take another I destroyer then. I yeah. chose one of each class because I didn't care. But like, I love I that think, idea though. So that's why I wanted to try it. I could just um, as easily be like, eh, I like Z44 better than any of those. Groups. Yeah. But I, yeah. I actually probably like Corno better than that. Yeah. I, I bet you do. I think you do. You know, I haven't had this conversation with you a number of times. I, if I was picking a second destroyer and leaving the cruisers on the table, because that's probably what I, Clyde, would do. I'd probably have to look pretty seriously at Groningen, but I know that I, Clyde, would definitely choose Neustrashimi just because it's a Soviet destroyer, and I, I love the ballistics of the guns and all of that kind of stuff. So I'd probably go with Neustra, but I think Groningen's probably the right choice for the masses, for the general people. Um, for battleships, I'm going to go with Kearsarge. I, I think I have to uh, because I like the guns on it. I like the hull on it well enough, and the rocket planes are pretty fun. That feels like sacrilege because it's a weird hybrid battleship kind of thing, but... Um, I don't really care for Marco Polo. I don't have the same recollections of Pomeran because I didn't get it until after it was power crept, basically. And so I didn't get to live through the fun time when it was the special thing. I don't have the sentimentality that you and lots and lots mm -hmm. and lots of other players do. Um, and then Awami, I liked a lot when it first came out. I like it less now. It's not bad. I just like it less than I used to. Um, I had a lot of fun with Awami when it first came out. And Sometimes I struggle a little bit with the guns to make things happen. I think that's a Clyde problem more than it's an Awami problem. And it has to do with angles of targets, things like that. Um, so yeah, for me, black, if I, I'd skip the cruisers, I'd just get a second destroyer because it's me. I'd get a, I'd probably get Neustra. Groningen's probably the right answer. And then I would right, get Well, Kearsarge. then you could just say you'd get Groningen too. I, I could say, say that. But I like yeah, Kearsarge I just well enough. I get those two destroyers. That's fine too. Well, I mean, I mean, Groningen's the right answer over Neustra. I'd still get Kearsarge, I think, because I think Kearsarge is that much fun, personally. Yeah. But yeah, and I and I agree. Chat, you know, I pointed what's out. Chat Kearsarge saying I've, I've been the, talking, not paying attention. So chat pointed out that Kearsarge is is the best of what's available as far as battleships oh, go, and and I think that's I think that's probably true. Um, it might be. Um, I, I think in today's I think it's, meta and I everything think it's too. Relatively yeah. good. It's it's just a good battleship, and then it has the plane gimmick, um, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, black requires teamwork to work. Uh, Mother says it's a selfish second line destroyer. Yeah, I, I think some of those things are definitely true. I don't feel that way at all about black. Its concealment is it, it isn't a second line destroyer. I don't you think it's take, second you, line. I go I take caps it's... with black, and I don't. I, second line destroyer is a Kabarask. I I go take caps with black and take fights with other DDs. It's not a second line destroyer. I, uh, I don't. I did. I was really grasping with the uh, selfish piece, right? Because you just smoke up and radar and do whatever you want. You can. You can. The thing about black, and and I think somebody in chat said that like you need help from your team. I don't know. You got your own radar. You got your own smoke. I think you can kind of go and solo warrior things as long as it's you're not too outnumbered. Um, but you know, I mean, your mileage may vary. It depends on play style and, and comfort with that kind of play style as well. So, I, I like that we're having this conversation in chat, though, guys. Keep it coming. Um, okay, let's take a look at some tier 10s. Uh, we're going to go to our first page. We have two pages of tier 10s. Uh, the first one up is Salem. Now, we talked about Salem earlier. 
and how if you're gonna get Tulsa, let me go back to that previous page, Tulsa costs 228,000 coal for 12,000 more coal, you can get Salem. So um, that would be my recommendation. Salem has uh, yeah. more guns. It's got uh, a better bow armor. The radar, I think, is only eight and a half kilometers instead of nine. Am I right on that or wrong? Chat, fact check me. Um, and so Salem's yeah. pretty strong that way. What she doesn't have the ability to do, and this is something that people need to remember, if you like Des Moines and you have Des Moines, uh, Salem does not have the ability to take both radar and hydros, if I might memory serves correctly. Correct. They're in the same slot. Yeah. So you're you're down one there, uh, Scott. Uh, Salem thoughts. What do you what do you think? This is a long, long time uh, coal cruiser. Yeah, Salem is again. It's a sister ship to Des Moines. It's that same class of ship, right? So you have the same uh, wicked main battery. You've got great bow taking capability. Um, like you said, it has an eight and a half kilometer radar, which flat sucks. It's in the same slot as hydro. I'm of the opinion that you take the hydro and you forego the radar because of that. Um, yeah, I think, I, in I, most agree, I, think. I think in situations you're better off having the hydro, uh, personally, but again, it's not bad that it can have radar. Um, but if you're going to hook yourself to an Island and do the whole bow in like Des Moines style play style. It's nice to have radar to pick out a destroyer, but at eight and a half kilometers, you're almost better off having the hydro to protect yourself from torpedoes and such. Um, it's got defensive AA. It has, uh, but it, you know, its claim to fame and what makes it different is that it has specialized repair teams. So again, it has that zombie heel, that that conqueror style mega heel. There's only a couple of U.S. cruisers that have that. The other one's Boise. Mm -hmm. um, also, the Pan American version, the way that a Julio has that, right? So it's this really strong heel and it keeps it alive. Relatively good concealment, great guns. Everybody knows, you know, if you like American guns on cruisers, the reload and everything is sick. The AP is great. The HE is great. Um, and again, it's a, it's a powerful ship in regards to that play style. Do you go get this if you already have Des Moines? Um, yeah, I mean, I have it and I have Des Moines, but it wouldn't be the first coal boat I would go get if I already had Des Moines. Because again, Des Moines yeah. lets you have hydros and it lets you have radar and it's a 10 kilometer radar and des moines is the one that you're going to see used in competitive um salem less so uh because of that limitation um you're you're trading the ability to have hydras and radar uh, for that mega heel the mega heel's great um so that's yeah. just a, a choice the uh, player has to make but all in all it's a it's a fun boat and if you're going to spend the coal don't spend it on tulsa just spend it on salem Totally agree. Um, I want to show chat something real quick. We'll jump over to the, the game client. Um, this is uh, my my Salem. I've got a commander on here who is trained, and it shows the, eight, the hit points per second for the specialized repair team is 1,084 in my build. I think base, it's like nine, it's just under 1,000, like 990 or something. Um, when you put this signal on, which I haven't put on yet, so here it is, uh, 1,084 hit points per second. You put that signal on, it jumps to 1,300 hit points per second for 20 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. So you're talking like 26,000 hit points, which is really, really impressive. I'd like to comment, uh, I'd like to actually two comments from chat. I want to go grab. Who Jam said, Wargaming, make tier nine cruisers great. Alaska just can't be the only one. I agree. Let's get some better tier nine cruisers out there. And then I liked what Mother Oni said, uh, which was 8.5 kilometer radar. The hydro is more useful than the radar. If something is that close to you, you're about to be torped. Uh, so you might as well take the acoustics instead. And I, I definitely agree with that sentiment. Um, I think again, Salem's one of those boats. It's one of the early coal boats. I think it might be the first, eh, I'm gonna back off of that statement. I think it's one of the very first coal ships. I can't remember if it was the first coal ship. I think it might've been though. Um, mm -hmm. It has been around for so, so long. Um, a lot of people have it. Like you said, in competitive, people are going to take uh, Des Moines because they can have both sensor packages. But if you don't have Des Moines yet, if you want to test out that line and you're comfortable with high tier play, um, Salem's an okay ship to add to your port. And it's better than Tulsa is. And the cost is not that much more. You can get 12,000 coal in not that long if you're uh, comfortable yeah. waiting a little bit longer. Strong ship, worth getting. Do you need it if you already have Des Moines? Probably not. Remember, the reason we buy coal ships, th there's, there's a couple of things, right? You buy coal ships because you want a different ship experience, you, and it should bring you something new that you don't already have in your hand. This is Clyde theory. You don't have to agree with it. Um, but if you buy something, you can also spend coal on things like commanders, right? If you spend your coal on 175,000 coal, 
uh, unique commander, that's going to make a lot of your ships better or different or special, whereas a ship should bring you something special all by itself. And so if you're new and you only have a few premiums that are high tier and you already have Des Moines, Salem's probably not the first one I would send you down to the store to get. I'd, get, I'd say get something that's going to bring you a little more variety, um, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly don't let me tell you how to live your life. If you want to go get Salem, feel free. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and again, it can be used as a captain trainer for that line. Yes. Uh, it's a brilliant. Very, trainer. very easily. Yeah. It's I don't I can't imagine it's not the same build and for the most part. So you can use it as a captain trainer for the Des Moines line. So even if you're working up that line, you're on Pensacola, you're on New Orleans, maybe you're even already to Baltimore. Um, but you want to, you know, get another ship that you can play tier tens with as you work towards Des Moines. This ship will let you do that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, Salem. R I was in chat. Razid makes a point that he plays DM with reload and Salem with extended range. Gotta does the same thing. Razid. Gotta has his Salem. <laughs> Salem, even though it's counter to the stupid radar situation, Gotta plays his Salem with uh, with range on it because he doesn't want he and hi, I play it with hydros for sure, but I play it with range on it. Uh, even though it's if you really want to be a goofball, you put range and spotter plane on Des Moines and then play that that way and don't play it with radar at all and be a jerk in randoms. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. Mother Oni talks about pairing it with a Petro or Moskva in a clan battle scenario, um, which I think is a great thing to do. Um, I really like Salem for uh, ranked because the when you're survivability Salem, right, with that super yeah. heal and everything, um, you're kind of more on your own in a ranked battle than you are in a clan battle. And so taking that survivability is going to make you a little bit more durable in a battle where you might have to carry. And sometimes in, in ranked, you got to carry with your hit points because somebody went and potatoed off into a corner and now you're carrying their weight too right so it's it's a tough uh a tough thing to do now again just you know as we often remind people we are not competitive turbo chads in here we're pretty regular guys um but uh we've we've, we've tried to think a little bit about some of this stuff so certainly share your yep. thoughts as well it's got a hayate tier 10 japanese cruiser now this thing used to cost 2 million free xp it did is she now worth it, it? <laughs> now it doesn't nobody thought so nobody uh, thought so you know, Hay Hayate, the poor, the poor thing with Hayate is that when it came out, it came out the exact same time as the Schmalland. Boy, that's they a both tough, cost, that's a tough They thing. both cost 2 million free <laughs> XP, and one of them is banned and overtly competitive and powerful, and the other one's Hayate. And so... Um, Correct. <laughs> I, the first time I played Hayate, I was taking part in an event. I Wargaming used to do these events um, uh, for Halloween and things where you would... Uh, people would play ships and you would blow them up and you'd get a prize. Um, and I think it was either a Halloween version of it or a Thanksgiving version of it. They don't do that anymore because board gaming lacks mirth and merriment in their modern iteration. But um, yeah. I, they I understand would give those people, events were a lot of work, but they were a lot of fun too. It is they too would bad give they don't do it. All of the volunteers who took part in those events were given press accounts. And the first time I got to play Hayate was using a press account because it was on there and I didn't have it because it cost 2 million free XP and that was crazy. Um, and I, I, and I, asking and I thought, it, hey, I was curious. Hey, you're like, <laughs> and I played it and I liked it. Um, yeah. You know, I, it's, it's, it's a different play style in a way from the Shimakaze and the Harigumo. Um, Hayate is a, uh, how we, we've described it before as kind of if you had an IJN gearing, but gearing's better because gearing has better concealment. Um, yeah, it's kind of gun... like you took some of Haragumo and some yeah. of Shimakaze and you put it together and you didn't get any a thing that was quite as good as either one. Nope. But it has some yeah. neat capabilities that almost work together, yeah. but don't quite work together yeah. as well as I want my, to. My biggest grump about Hayate as far as being interesting and an interesting meld of Shimakaze and Haragumo is that it... It has, you know, Japanese 127s like Shimakaze, but it has a usable reload to gunboat with closer to Harigumo. It has torpedoes more like Shimakaze and less like Harigumo because it has a couple racks of torpedoes. You can actually take torpedo reload booster on it or smoke, which is more like the torpedo line than the gunboat line and yada yada, right? It's kind of how do you merge things? But where it loses out is that it's a massive ship. It's just gosh darn gigantic. And it has a god awful concealment. As it built does. like built for concealment. It's 6.1, right? So it gets the Haragumo concealment, not the Shimakaze concealment. 
I have long takes after its the, mother that way. <laughs> I, I have long been of the opinion that you could improve this ship and make it more popular if it had a 5.9 concealment. And that's not even a huge buff. It's Five not nine? a huge buff. Come on, put it gaming. between put it between Haragumo and Shima, and I think it would be more interesting. And for whatever reason, yes. it is what it is, and nobody yeah. plays it. Um, it's not extremely fast. It's not extremely maneuverable. It's it's a whole lot of things where you can make a list about this ship and go, well, it's not as good at Shima as this, and it's not as good as Haragumo as this, so why does it exist? Um, yeah. Now, one you know, thing and that's you... kind of a bummer, right? I like yeah. it. I wish it was a... I really wish it was the best of both worlds. Right, right. And, and not just one of the ships in World of Warships. Yeah, and it's more the latter for sure. Now, for you know what's what's you know uh sorry i'm I'm trying to i'm trying like five sentences simultaneously i should do them sequentially that's how communication works um brand said hi a day is great into the chat earlier um seething stoic said i got one from a christmas crate but i seldom play it um you know so we're getting some comments people have experience with this boat whereas if we had talked about this two years ago everyone would be like tell us clyde what's it like like now people have it right and people know about the ship and they have formed an opinion um the thing about ayate is like you say she's almost good at a lot of things but she's not quite good enough at a lot of things too if you like japanese boats and you're interested in a challenge and i say that seriously i'm not joking um pick her up she's not hard to play but she doesn't play the game for you you have to do it like you have to make sure you're playing Hayate well. You can't just play a destroyer well. You have to understand Hayate, play her how she needs to be played, and then you can get things done with her. I've played like 50 games in Hayate. My win rate in Hayate is almost exactly the same as my account win rate. I, it's very much, this is as good as I am at any given boat. I'm the same goodness at Hayate. So I'm not a Hayate chat or anything. Um, but I, I, again, I, it's a boat that I enjoy to play because she's not super easy to play. But if you're looking for a boat that's like really good or really strong or whatever, this isn't it. You should continue to look. If you want to make two poor decisions, you can do what I did, which is buy the Hayate and then immediately buy the lacquer camo for it without even having played a single battle in the boat because I'm an idiot. Um, but I love this camo so much, and it's so beautiful, and it looks so good on the Hayate, and I believe this is the only destroyer you can put this camouflage on. And so I had to have it, and it costs 5,000 doubloons, which is $25, $20. Um, don't do this unless you're, unless this sounds like a good idea yeah. to you, and I hope I've advertised it as a poor idea. She is beautiful, and she is a medium-ish, kind of slightly bad boat, but not that bad. Yeah. Um, I have that camo because viewer of the show Frost Knight bought that camo for me. And that, that is the one thing. Yeah. Very kind of him. And the one thing that makes my Hayate really sing. Looking statistic <laughs> statistically at where Hayate lands amongst tier 10 destroyers on North America. Yeah. Um, what do you got for Hayate, As far as games played, right? Hayate's been out a while. Uh, it, only, it has 148,000 games played. Druid has 151,000 and Tromp has 130,000. Those are the ships that bracket it. Um, it's near the bottom of the list of tier 10 destroyers with games played, considering how long it's been available. Super and, rare. And since it, and since it came out the same time as Smallland, and Smallland is a ship that not everybody has, Smallland has 461,000 games played in randoms, right? So yeah, that gives you an gosh. idea of the popularity of Hayate. I wish How many Hayate was Hayate was... again? You said 460 for Smallland? Uh, Smallland's at uh, 461, Hayate's at 148. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. just and Druid, to how Druid's at 151. Committed. And like Druid's a weird boat, right? <laughs> yes. Like, like Hayate's <laughs> got a lot of things that most people would find normal. You can gunboat, you can torp boat. You can torp reload booster. It you got reload run booster. You or can smoke. run smoke and sit and smoke and farm with the guns, but it just doesn't. I don't even want to say it's a master. You know, it's not a jack of all trades, a master of none, because it, it's not a great. It's not great at being a jack of all trades either. It's too bad. I wish it was better, because yeah. I love the idea of it. It's a brilliant idea. I love the idea of this boat, which is not quite Haragumo and it's not quite Shima, but it can't, you know, and I like the idea that you can kind of, if you go with a torpedo, torpedo reload booster, it's really torpy. If you go with the smoke, you need to lean into the guns. I like that it's kind of a transformer that way. 
And I think you're right. And and I say you're right because we've had this conversation a bunch of times and I think we've just agreed that 0.2 yeah. kilometers better conceal doesn't even make it the stealthiest boat out there. You're still going to get outspotted by a bunch no. of boats. But no. it makes it competitive. It makes it a little this bit makes it feel better. a little bit more comfortable, mm -hmm. you know? I would I would say that Damn. the the design concept and in the blurb about this ship from Wargaming is that it's a hypothetical design for a Shima class destroyer that is armed with 127 dual purpose twin guns that have a higher rate of fire and you can do more gunboating, right? Yeah. I would contend that the realization of the concept of that for Shima is Yamagiri. I mean, it really is because Yamagiri, at the very last second, they're like, hey, we're about to ship that, but hey, can you add a machine gun to it before it goes out the door? Yeah. And the Yamagiri just got so much more interesting when they did that to it. And mm -hmm. I agree. They, they definitely yeah. hit that mark with that boat. Whereas yeah. they didn't here. Anyway, I, you know, it's funny. This the, We've talked about Hayate in the past. I don't think we've been this downer on it before. We've had a similar conversation in the past, but um, I don't want people to think that it's terrible and everyone should go out there and, you know, yell about you know, your, or uh, yell, yell about Hayate, because that's not true. It's oh. just that it's almost what we wish it was. You it's know? a hell of a lot better for Cole than 2 million free XP. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Okay, Trump, le Trump. Uh, which is not French, I guess it's Dutch. Uh, Trump is a, another destroyer. So this one is a Dutch destroyer, came out for coal, um, 238,000 coal. She's, speaking of uh, ships that have a certain amount of concealment, this one has 5.9 concealment when built, if I remember right. My captain is not retrained. Um, or maybe it's 6.0, might be 6.0. Um, so Trump has 150 millimeter guns that reload in 4.6 seconds in my half completed build here. Uh, it's got a 70 second torpedo reload and then it has airstrikes as well. They're a very small reticle for the airstrikes, which means you can hit pretty small areas with it. And what's neat about all of its ordnance is they're all kind of within 10 to 13 kilometers range, uh, which means that if there's a target you can affect with your guns or your torps or your airstrikes, you can probably affect it with the other two with very little maneuvering. Um, and your stealth is l is good enough that as long as you're not being outspotted by another destroyer or a submarine, which is common, if I'm being honest with you, um, you can uh, you can use all three of those ordinances against uh, one of those targets. Um, she does have smoke, or no, she doesn't have smoke, excuse me. She's got a speed boost, and it's a 25% speed boost, which is a good thing because the ship is incredibly slow without it. And so you need to be using that speed boost whenever you can. And then it's got a defensive AA fire. Scotta, Trump thoughts from your side of the table. I, I kind of like Trump, but I acknowledge that she's a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't, I haven't played Trump a lot since it came out. Um, Trump's in weird, fun, fun little tidbits about Trump. If you if you look at Trump in the armor uh, section, if you pull up its armor profile, Trump has a citadel. Sure. Yeah, I'll do. It that doesn't real quick. it doesn't work as a citadel because it's a destroyer, but Trump has a citadel model because in real life Trump was a cruiser. Um, it drives around like a light cruiser. It's about that size, right? But yeah. It has a it has a damn citadel in there, and so oh, shoot. would um, you look at that vital so, <laughs> ship? Part? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so that sucks because that's just that, yeah, and it's a, so that's a shell catcher that things you it doesn't you don't get citadel but it eats full pens there it'll eat full pens yeah right and so that's a downer shells won't overpen you that will stick in that so um, the slope is kind of interesting there right because when yeah. you've got uh, where's the side plating armor is it this one so there's a there's a kind of a downward slope like you see mm -hmm. normally on a mm -hmm. ship and then when that's gone. Um, you have an opposite slope, and so that helps. That makes it a little harder for your yeah. ships, uh, for your yeah, ships and to it's get spaced. Through. It's yeah, spaced, it's, it's, but it's the armor exciting. is thin. It is thin. Yeah, it's exciting spaced armor for a light cruiser, uh, right. which is what Trump was. Right. Um, but you know, that's not the only ship like that. The the, the uh, we'll talk about Alvaro de Bazan, and the, that's based on the Italian Capitano Romano class, which were also light cruisers, not destroyers. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes that happens in our game. Uh, I don't like Trump's guns very much, but I might be in the minority there. They are like 150s, I think. They and are, yeah, 150s. I, I just, I don't like them that much. I don't like that it only puts out like three torpedoes when it launches torpedoes. Yep. And um, the torp and, launchers are dedicated side to side, so you can't launch yep. all six on one side. And, I, and I'm and i not a huge fan of the, uh, the tiny airstrikes. 
I'm I am comfortably. I do comfor- like the ten years. I'm comfortably yeah. good with 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 Good and Lou and that line and the way the airstrikes work. I've never really liked the airstrikes on De Seven Provincian, which are small. Um, I will say the benefit of the Tromp ones being small is they also, uh, while they're animated the same, appear to not have any kind of parachutes or slowing mechanisms. Because boy, howdy, do they fall out of the sky quickly and hit their target. Um, and and there are fun things you can do with this ship when in that you can use that to like drop things over islands that you couldn't get at with a destroyer normally and there's some fun gimmickry that can be had there uh, but trump's trump's not exactly my cup of tea um i think it's fine I, I i don't think it's bad it's just not really a ship that i would like to play very much the only thing i at first i didn't think i would like well at first i thought i would really like trump and then i found out how slow it was and I thought, forget this ship. I'm going to kick yeah. it out the door and hate it forever. And then I kind of fig- and and I tried to build it for like range on the guns and stuff. And I ended up drawing that back, making the gun range shorter so that my ordinances were all about the same, like I talked earlier. Mm-hmm. And then I learned how to optimize, not optimize, but I learned that the speed boost made it not suck so bad. And I learned better times yep. to use that than I was doing at first. And when you've got the speed boost up, I like Trump. And the minute it goes away, I hope that I can find a safe place to be, right? Uh, because yep. it's not fun without the speed boost very much i mm-hmm. do like the guns whereas i know you you just said like you know i don't think i like them that much um i like them they pen about looks like 94 millimeters at 12 kilometers which is enough to punch through light cruisers it's and you can farm battleship superstructures with it the reload time is sub five seconds which for 150 isn't bad um, there's only six of them it's not an eight gun destroyer so that's a that's a negative right um i i think the guns are fine i don't think they're like yeah. world beating they're not going to change the way you feel about the dutch navy but um and then, mother oni and chat yeah. makes a point okay. about the guns and the caliber and that's exactly why i don't like them mother oni because yes, i lost a, a i lost a one-on-one knife fight when i was full health against an oster gotland that was full health and I didn't feel like I should have, but I got trashed by an Ostergotland um, in Tromp because his shells annihilated me in comparison. And so yeah. I I think when, I, when, when I've when i had fun in Tromp, it's in a div where maybe somebody else smokes and then I could use the guns to smoke farm on like a battleship or something like that. I think they're okay there, but I, I just don't, I just don't. There's, there's just bad experiences I had playing Tromp that make me not like it a lot. And one thing yeah. I'll point out really quick before I throw back to you is the reason okay. you like the speed boost is because it's not a normal speed boost. It's an emergency engine power, and it gives you a 25% maximum engine speed boost, not 8% like most speed boosts, right? Yeah. So maximum engine powers are awesome. Not a lot of ships have that. Smallland has that. Um, it's insane. Like, that's a real legitimate like game changer, and it runs for a minute. And, and and I'm sure you have a speed boost module on your Tromp. I know I do. I do, um, yeah. To stretch that out, right? So that's a real speed boost thing that makes something happen for you and makes the ship a lot more playable. And when that goes away, it feels like you're in a little plotting cruiser again. Yeah, so I'll, I'll bring that up real quick. The top speed, if I take off this signal, 33 and a half knots. My captain's not trained, but that doesn't affect speed. So 33 and a half knots, that is very, very slow. And I, I've got a hot take video about this one. If you're curious about Trump, you wanna know more about it, you can check that video out on my YouTube. It's where I go into detail on it. Um, and I do have a speed boost module because that gives you a 30% longer action time, which for me is 78 seconds, right? So 78 seconds with signals and captain's perks would go up a little bit more because I think this one right here yep that one's gonna give me another 10 percent. so that's another almost eight seconds Mm -hmm. so you can make that speed boost run for a long time and you really want to if you do this this show's not really about builds necessarily um but like talking about trump like the speed without that is so poor and with it is so good that you want to opt at least i wanted to optimize for that because that makes the ship enjoyable your comment your discussion back and forth kind of with with mother oni's comment i agreed right it sucks to get into a knife fight with a dpm cruiser or dpm destroyer or even an ostergotland which has reasonable dpm and a heel it's a bad situation um and so yeah you, this is for farming and hitting big targets you've got airstrikes you got a few torpedoes and you got 150s and um and there are certain fights that are not good for for uh for trump here but, but i think that's probably a pretty good roundup on this one i don't think trump's terrible um i'd probably hmm, well we'll talk about which i'd get first later when we get to the end of the tens but um let's jump to alvaro and have you walk through alvaro de Basan. 
Alvaro de Bazan was the first uh, mm-hmm. Spanish destroyer introduced in our game. Still is the only one, as far as I can recall. I think so. Uh, again, tier 10, based on the Capitani Romano Italian destroyer. So this is like the same hull as the Italian tier 10 tech tree uh, Regolo. It's the same hull as the uh, Paolo Emilio. Um, I, those might be the only three ships that are using this hull. I don't think there's anybody think else right now. I think it's those three. I think it's those three. Um, it has the same uh, guns as those, the same turret layout, different characteristics because there's no sap. Again, uh, in chat, Brand points out, it's humongous. Yeah, in real life, this was a light cruiser, and this is his biggest one. Um, the Spanish one here, the Bazan, has the lowest concealment out of all of them in-game. Uh, you can build this uh, built for concealment. Um, I think it's what, like six point two. Yeah, I think it's uh, low six. Something in yeah. something in that in that ballpark, which is fine for tier ten. It's not epic, but it's not bad for what I would consider a gunboat. Uh, this ship it has the Spanish uh, gimmick of an auto loader uh, mode for its main battery. So. Uh, you can you can either fire the main battery, which I think is going to pick up a buff here really soon, which brings the main battery reload down to like five-ish seconds instead of six-ish seconds. Is that yeah, it's, right? It's coming down, I think, 0. 0.6 seconds. I think it's coming yeah. from party, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, you know, like, you know, it, that's nice. More, more main battery reload on it by default is nice. And then and then if you use the, is it a, is it a, I haven't played it in a while, so when you use the burst fire, I can't remember if it gives you three salvos or two. I think it's three. I'll confirm uh, real quick. I think it is three, though. Yeah, and then you have that long reload, if you're familiar with how the Spanish yeah, cruisers three. work. Um, that's how Bazan's guns work. Um, and they're fine. They're 135 millimeter, which makes them kind of interesting. Um, I don't think the AP is anything special. It's not like the AP that's going to like devastate light cruisers, um, but the HE is good for stuff. Um, the AP is probably fine too. I, I just I haven't played this boat in a long time, and the torpedoes on it are one thing that agitated me. Um, it has like very similar torpedoes to Regolo, so they're like thirteen and a half kilometer, mm-hmm. fifty six knot. I remember you lamenting about this. Yeah, yeah I yeah. just don't <laughs> understand. Like like the Italian the Italian destroyers have these like slow, longish range torpedoes, and that's kind of like a thing. Because they're generally gunboats. I didn't understand when they made this a Spanish ship why they carried that over, why they didn't give it some kind of something different... Spanish-flavored, basically. Something yeah. different, right? Yeah. If, because yeah. I still would consider this more of a gunboat or a hybrid, yeah. but those 56-knot torpedoes are gross. Um, <laughs> you know, just give it give it like 12-kilometer, like 68-knot torpedoes or something, right? Just give it something different. I don't know why it has to have the same ones. And someday... When we get a Spanish destroyer line, I bet they won't have this kind of torpedo package. No, this will be a weirdo boat when they do. This will be a weirdo boat. It'll be, as, it'll as be definitely different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your take on Bazan? Bazan, Bazan, I relatively like. I think it's kind of medium powered. Um, she's not quite like powerful enough that people are talking about it with Bazan a lot, right? I think the buff that's coming is well deserved. Um, I like the approximate i think it's 0.5 or 0.6 second main battery buff and they're gonna buff the funny button reload as well which is great um i like the 135 millimeter guns i think they hit pretty well i think the thing that people get excited about when they first get it is the reload not reload booster what's it called the burst fire mechanic they they get excited about that but you got to remember the burst fire actually lowers your dpm you Mm want to use the burst fire when you need a burst of fire not because you think it makes you shoot more because it doesn't it makes you shoot less because it's it's a uh, long reload at the end costs you more than it would to just fire reload fire reload fire so use that sparingly learn to use that and learn the times when that makes the most sense um you know again i, I like that she's as stealthy as she is 6.2 kilometers is not stealthy we were just lamenting about how high it needs to be 5.9 what the heck well it's true but alvaro uh, is a little bit tankier it's got more hit points um things like that so it can kind of deal with that and 6.2 makes her pretty stealthy considering the amount of gun power she can put out in a very short period of time um um, so, you know, I enjoyed playing Alvaro. I got a hot take on this one as well. So you can check out that video on YouTube if you're interested. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think she's an all-rounder. I'm hopeful that the buff will help. I don't think it's going to turn her from a boat that nobody played to a boat that everybody can't get enough of. I think it's going to help make her a little bit more 
um, a little bit more competitive. And I say competitive with a lowercase c, like in random battles, ranked yeah. battles, things like that. Um, I don't think it's going to make her a, a king of the sea ship. That's not likely yeah. to happen. But yeah, just I mean, mechanically, amongst all these 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 um, tier ten coal ships, um, you know, it has the worst AP DPM of the destroyers. It's actually worse than Hayate. Mm-hmm. It has it has um, I think it has the worst HE DPM. Nope, Trump beats it by only five. Trump's HE DPM is only five k less, and so you're talking about a ship with two less guns. Yeah. Um. So the HE DPM is not really there either. Um. Right. So then you're like, well, I guess it's because it's a hybrid, right? Because it's also like a torpedo platform. It can launch a lot of torpedoes. <laughs> right, well, fellas? Right? Yeah, but like, <laughs> yeah, but the torpedoes yeah. are like, hey, let me shoot those over there and hope you don't move. You should because... launch the torps all oh, the you time. you should use them all Just the time. Just put them out man, there. Yeah. At, you don't use them. If you're using them at that, that maximum range, best of luck to you. Unless oh, yeah, somebody's yeah. just not moving because they're so slow. So right. I don't know. I, I this ship this ship could be a lot better. Uh, it there's it's it's really actually not that great on paper. Yeah, um, yeah. And as far as playing it, it doesn't feel that amazing when you play it either. Uh, so sometimes <laughs> sometimes that goes together. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I wish it was better than it is. Um, yeah. I I, like... I don't I I unfortunately feel like it was balanced around the the reload mechanic. And, oh, without question. And yeah. the the stuff there, and and uh, I think it, to its detriment. Um, so I'm glad they're buffing it, and I hope they continue mm-hmm. to look at stuff like that on all kinds of ships. Um, I mean, nobody told me this, but I this ship in my mind was used to figure out how to make the cruiser land right. Right? They put it out, and they mm-hmm. found out how the reload uh, or the burst fire thing would work. And then when they put the cruisers right. together, they used that knowledge to do that. And now that they've got the cruisers out, they're fixing this one a little bit, right? Yep. They learned some more. It, right, so. in a way. They tried. They, they brought that mechanic out first on the Canarias, the tier six first ever oh, Spanish ship. Oh, that's true, that, that's true. It had that yeah, mechanic when it was in test. test. It had that mechanic in test and it was mm-hmm. extremely overpowered and they pulled it. Um, yep. And this was from before I was involved in test. I just know this from fables. Right, uh, and they right. took that off of it and they put it out without that. And then when they brought this ship out again, they tried the mechanic again on this ship to see what it could do. And yeah. then the final iteration of it is in the cruiser tech line where you see how it works there. Um, yep. You um, know, it, okay. it just is. It's just one of the ships in World of Warships, unfortunately. <laughs> I think uh, I think I like it a little bit better than you, but I would. I like gunboat destroyers, and you're less of a fan of them, so that makes sense. I, I don't think it's a good team. gunboat destroyer. Is the problem I have with it? No, I, I understand that, <laughs> and 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 again, I, I give it. A, I throw it a little bit of a bone there for for whatever reason. I like the way the guns work and feel. Um, Motheroni said, hey, "Why play this when you could play Marceau?" For me, it's the 2.5 second faster shell flight time at 12 kilometers. Yeah. Right, Marceau is incredibly difficult to hit at range with. Um, you need to be in dangerous places in Marceau to be successful. And you can be, by the way. Marceau is a great boat. Um, but I like playing my gunboats a little further away. And Alvaro lets me do that better than Marceau. But it does not put out the kind of fire that Marceau does. Marceau is legendary for that, which is why it has to have those shitty gun angles, right? That that make it um, a little more difficult to hit things at range. So, you know, do I think people are going to be dropping their Marceaus for this? No, right? Not even after the reload buff. But I am, like you, I'm excited to see the buff come through and see how the community reacts. I think it'll be a small reaction, um, but I'm, I'm glad to see that they're thinking about this boat and they haven't just banished it to the Shadow Realm or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's Bazan. Um, speaking of Marceau, she's next. Um, did you talk about Bazan? You did. Let's talk about Marceau. We segued right into it. Um, Highest DPM of any tier 10 dist- HE DPM? Which, who has the highest HE DPM of all tier 10 destroyers? If it's not Marceau, Marceau's high on the list. Um, I'll look that up here in a sec. But Marceau, uh, lots of guns that shoot very fast and do lots of damage. She's got uh, torpedo launchers uh, that go nine kilometers, uh, which is a kilometer longer than those on Kleber. Um, she out DPMs Kleber, but Kleber has high velocity fast shells. Kleber being the tier 10 tech line French destroyer. Um, Marceau's uh, really great. Uh, I like it less because, like I said just a second ago, I like the high velocity shells. It makes I hit more with them, right? Um, and, and I like hitting more often. And so for me, I tend to choose Kleber over Marceau. But for people who like French destroyers and people who want to play competitive and their clan needs a Marceau because it is a competitive ship, um, if Kleber gets banned, um, things like this, 
<clears throat> Marceau can be a good thing to add to your port for that reason. And she is popular. She is powerful. She is chadly. And she is competitive. Um, she's got a Marceau thoughts while I look up uh, her DPM and make an announcement in chat. Yeah. Um, because it's a uses the same hull as Colbert, it has the French damage saturation, which makes it a lot stronger, even though it doesn't have a heal, right? It, it takes damage saturation better. Uh, Marceau acts really because of the dual purpose turrets. These are the same turrets that are on Colbert, the light cruiser, and it right. gives it a really high AA rating. So it's actually, I've shot down a lot of planes with Marceau before. It's actually a pretty good AA play platform for what it is. I believe it also has defensive AA as a consumable because of that. Um, yeah, and it does. It has a speed boost, which is very French. Um, I like Marceau quite a bit. Between the two, I agree with you that Claire Bear's guns are easier to use because of the shell velocity, but Marceau has so much higher base reload. It um, does. It's way so that's, faster. Yeah. That's nice. And if you're comfortable with the guns, I wouldn't build these guns for range unless you're like a, it's a savant that can, you know, deal with the fact you're that you're either a savant or you're very foolish. I won't say stupid. Yeah. I'll say foolish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can do things with these guns. Yeah. Like you can do light cruiser things, like actually farm over islands, uh, yep. which you don't tend to be able to do with Colbert's guns. Um, True. And I like, I do like the guns on Marceau. Marceau's torpedo DPM is woefully uh, different than Colbert's, right? Colbert's torpedoes reload like twice as fast. They hit harder. Uh, they go faster. The, the torpedoes, Marceau has good torpedoes, but like they're not in the same category as Colbert's. Colbert's are like earth shatteringly good. Um, I love that extra so, kilometer range, though. You know, that the extra kilometer happy. range is fine, but the fact that the reload is like, yeah, the reload true. is so much longer and the speed is slower and the alpha is lower. Yeah. Um, Four yeah, launchers, but, which but, is cool, but you know, you know, I would say out of all of these, um, these cold DDs, Marceau is probably the strongest of them. Um, but it's I, not a. It's not a, it, it's a ship that has a, it doesn't have a really low skill floor. Like you, mm -hmm. you can't just like fall into Marceau and figure it out. I don't think, I think it takes a little bit of skill to understand how to use a ship like this. Um, it's not, you know, like, I don't think it's as easy for somebody who to step into as even like Hayate would be, or Bazan would be because of the way that plays. There's no smoke. You're playing at high speed. You're running a gun. Yep. You're and and not only running gun, but you're running gun with guns that make that a little bit harder. Um, so it's not like Kavarask or or um, that play style where you're where you're running around at a longer range, landing shells on a battleship and farming fires. You can do that with it once you get used to the shell ballistics. Um, but where it really shines is inside of ten kilometers, annihilating other destroyers. Mm -hmm. um, with with a really savage amount of HE DPM and even AP DPM, the AP is nothing to sneeze at either. It just tears stuff up. So, well, and once I think it's a I think it's a fun ship, but it's not a, it's not a super easy ship to fall into. No, I, that's actually a really good assessment you've given it there in terms of its skill floor, things like that. And and once you've eliminated that destroyer, if there is something you can farm over a, a low island or something, if you need to take cover because radar is coming or whatever, and you don't think you can s just speed juke, which is usually your defense, right? With all the French destroyers, you're going to use your French damage saturation and your speed and your ability to turn to just avoid incoming fire, which removes all of the power that radar has over you. Radar only only can frighten you if you're afraid of being seen. But if you're in Kleber, Marceau, Chaba, you know, any of these boats, you don't care if you're seen. And so like, you know, you can do those things, but mm -hmm. um, but you're right. If you can find a battleship that's maybe not moving right now and they're within range and you can hide behind something, um, what a great thing that you can do to it with this horrible ship and, and this little beastie, right? Which can just tear you up. Mm -hmm. um, so Marceau, definitely, I, I think I have to agree with your statement. Like looking at all the ships that are on the screen at the moment from destroyers, at least Marceau's certainly one of the most uh it certainly is the most of the competitive of the five that we can see right now um and probably the most competitive of the coal destroyers at tier 10 and we'll i'll, I'll adjust that if i see a ship on the next page i'm not remembering um mm. You're right about the skill floor, though. This is not for the faint of heart, um, but it's also a great place to learn about that kind of play style because you can use that in a lot of ships um, uh, that are kind of similar in flavor. And I don't think we're done seeing fast destroyers in World of Warships. They've got more countries and things they can be coming out with, and who knows what they're going to be like. Um, I don't know that they're going to you know, give us another 
Xerox of a Kleber necessarily. I guess they did. Kleber CLR came out yeah. this year. <laughs> Damn it. Kleber CLR entered. Immediately the proven with, wrong. Yeah. With its 6,000. Hey, you remember me? A. Yeah, no yeah. joke. But I mean, yeah, I, Marceau's a, I think Marceau's a strong boat and it's going to have a lot of fans. Um, I, again, I, I tend to choose something that it's easier to hit with. Maybe I'm too potate for Marceau and maybe I just need to take it out some more. So maybe we'll take this one out on stream sometime in the future as well. I'll add it to my list of boats to re-engage with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mother mentions <laughs> Mother Mother Onai uh, mentions the new Dazzle skill, um, which is gonna which is a little bit stronger than it used to be. That could be fun to try out on this thing, um, for sure, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Sherman Beta Flex, Scotta for a Sherman, Golden Barnacles uh, People's Choice Award winner last year. Tell us about Forrest Sherman. Yeah, Forrest Sherman's a tier 10 American destroyer, uh, different than gearing in that it is really a heavily gun-based ship. Uh, as a uh, sap, uh, three three guns that reload instantaneously that can fire sap or HE. Uh, they have relatively good shell ballistics, although like most American shells, they are a little bit floaty. Um, probably better than like gearings as far as float goes, though. Um, uh, Boris Sherman, really popular, I think, with the community as far as being a playable ship. It's not a fast ship. No, um, she's pretty slow. Yeah, it's not. It it's not great at repositioning in games because of that. Um, but it has good smoke and really good gun battery. Even though it's only three barrels, they're really usable just to farm the crap out of stuff. You light a lot of fires, and then you can switch over and shoot through stuff with the sap as well. Uh, it does have uh, torpedoes. They are fixed launch angles, two per side, very narrow launch angles, very limiting. This ship, more than anything, should have what came later on the Japanese uh, light cruisers, the turning torpedoes that we see on. We see them on British battleships now. We see them on uh, Ger yeah. some German, like the Anhalt has them. Some, you know, and and the the Japanese light cruisers have the turning torpedoes. This ship should have had that mechanic. Um, in real life, these were wire guided torpedoes that did do that. Uh, yeah. they, they turned, yeah. they, they didn't just shoot one angle, but it doesn't for whatever reason, uh, God forbid that torpedoes on it be useful. Um, yeah, Matsu should have it right. But, but is, but as far as being a gunboat goes, even though it's not a fast ship, the guns on it are very powerful and very usable. And I think it's skill floor because of the long smokes and really good hydro acoustics. Um, make it a lot more playable for a lot more people. Yeah, uh, incredibly popular boat. I can. <laughs> when we did the Golden Barnacles Award Show last March, and we announced Best Destroyer, let me tell you guys the the destroyer that Best New Premium or Special Destroyer that won last year was the Trump uh, from our panel of judges. And then you, I could not believe the number of people that erupted in chat and were like, "Are you serious, Forrest Sherman?" Blah blah blah. Everyone was furious that it wasn't for a sherman and then of course when we got to the people's choice award the best overall ship for the whole year voted on by you know 170 people i think voted last year um for sherman won hands down um, it was a great win for Forrest Sherman. Obviously, very popular ship with the community. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are probably doing research for coal ships. And if they came across this video, um, I think a Forrest Sherman would be a great ship for you. If you like rat a tat tat machine gun destroyers, um, if you like your Friesland, if you like your Gronigan, if you like um, sap destroyers, which is pretty crazy. So you mentioned the, the three barrels that this thing has. It's got three guns that shoot twice as fast as the six guns on gearing so it's HEDPM is the same as gearings but what it has that gearing doesn't is um, of course different guns therefore some just slightly different ballistics but it's got different uh, or it's got the sap shells right which can pen at, at all kinds of angles and they just destroy uh, destroyers I, I shouldn't use that word but it just shred destroyers uh, uh, up because it's just great at tearing up lightly armored targets and so if you ever get into a situation where you cannot escape the forest sherman in a dd maybe you pop out around an island and they surprise you they get you in hydros um, it is really really devastating to your ship and of course if you're the person in the destroyer in the in the forest sherman it's really enjoyable that's one of the reasons in my opinion why the boat is so slow is because if it was fast enough to catch you it would be the stuff of nightmares right um it's a it's a good boat 
Um, and it does suit a particular type of player who likes that kind of uh, approach where they've got that long American smoke, they love the DPM, um, and they don't mind lying and wait for a victim to come along yeah. and, and then they tear them up. So a very popular yeah, then, boat, yeah. really easy and, to recommend. To and people. then with five kilometer Hydras, which no other, yeah, I, can't think yeah. of, I can't think of another American destroyer that has Hydras. Right. Um, Very unique, somebody I now think, to this show. somebody now will point out like you're forgetting Monahan or something you know, like some <laughs> yeah no. Sims or something that I you know a long you know line I mean? of American hydro destroyers yeah, but, but this like one really one. uses it to quite to its yeah and so you benefit. can use it you know you use it in that regard like as a cap fighter uh, where you move in you can move into a cap and you can press another DD that smokes up um, with those hydros and then you can annihilate them with that gun battery. Uh, while you smoke yourself up and hold them on those hydros, right? And so that's always a strong ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so that I think is another thing that it does that makes it interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. A lot of a lot of positive support. I'm just scrolling through the comments here for for Sherman. So again, easy recommendation um, to new players, just because literally by the odds you will probably enjoy for sherman it's just kind of a good boat and people really enjoy its play style so um i think there's there's a lot to be said about this boat. we've said plenty about it i think at this point um we've got six more well i actually don't know if it's six or five or what let's go to our last page of oh no damn it it's nine um we've got nine more ships to cover and the hour is growing late and i do have to work in yep. the morning so we're gonna do these in something of a lightning round i'm gonna actually start with yoshino and say yoshino is a zuma but with torps i think the rest of the review is the same scott any thoughts on yoshino <laughs> yeah uh you can check out other ship shows we've done on coal boats where we talked about these ships obviously but mm -hmm. um I think Yoshino is better than Azuma because of those torps and it is, because yeah. it's a tier 10. Yeah, you get a little bit better matchmaking. Um, but but yeah, for the most part, it plays the same way, kind of longer ranges. I think it also has probably better AA. Like Yoshino <laughs> has defensive AA and does some other stuff in that regard that make it a little more interesting. Um, again, not a ship that really gets used in competitive modes. It's really kind of a randoms farmer, I think. Yeah, um, and she does really well at that. Good HEL, lots yeah, of fire chance, yeah. you know. And good AP, and yeah. don't and good don't AP. sleep on that AP. Good AP. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you know, I I think uh, I think again, if you're looking at those two ships, unless you have a reason that you want the nine over the ten, I would consider just saving a little bit more coal and getting the Yoshino. Yeah, um, I'm going to keep that section brief. I want to hit Moskva. We're going to do these three across the bottom real quickly. Moskva, mm -hmm. um, and I'll talk about Moskva a little bit. Um, really, really reliable ship, heavily used in competitive, uh, better DPM than Petro, um, and doesn't give much up for it. I know that people are going to, you know, hassle me for that statement, but it's got really good DPM. It's pretty tanky as long as you're bow in. If you turn sideways, uh, Moskva doesn't survive quite as well as Petro does. Um, but good AP, good HE, flat ballistics, easy to hit stuff. Um, reasonable AA, um, 12 kilometer radar. I think it has hydros as well. Um, uh, Moskva is just strong and it's remained a reliable stalwart member of the competitive crew for a long time, especially in situations where Petro winds up getting limited or even outright banned in a clan battle season. Um, Skada, you've played a little bit of Moskva, but you tend to avoid these kinds of ships in competitive, uh, which is fine because I don't mind playing them or assigning them to somebody else. But what are your thoughts on uh, Moskva as a coal yeah. ship to somebody who's looking to get into that kind of cruiser? Yeah, we've got a few on this page we'll talk about. The Moskva is a former tech tree ship that was converted to a coal ship due to refactoring, right? So Moskva used to be the tier 10 Russian tech tree cruiser. And then they decided to make Petropavlovsk and uh, Alexander Nevsky and split the line. And Moskva got punted to be a coal boat. Um, as far as it being a coal boat goes, it's a, it's a great cruiser uh great guns that are really easy to use because they have really flat ballistics good fire chance with the he strong ap um again like clyde said where this ship falters is that it it isn't as tanky as petro it will take citadels to the sides as you can see there it has kind of tall sides um and it uh it's just kind of a bigger ship uh it also has just even when built for it the concealment's terrible that used to be a thing uh, where big cruisers like this had bad concealment. Nowadays, this this ship gets like there's a I can think of a dozen battleships that have lower concealment than Moscow, which is just kind of goofy. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, all in all, a great ship and still used in competitive modes. 
still very popular in clan battles, um, especially when they start limiting uh, the use of other Russian cruisers, right? Because this has a 12 kilometer radar that isn't short duration. It lasts for 30 seconds without buffs and it has five kilometers of hydroacoustics. Um, yeah, it's a good ship. Um, if you're, if you are a fledgling, uh, clan battles player and you're looking mm -hmm. for, well, I could buy a tier 10 coal ship so I could play in clan battles. Um, this ship is probably the one that your caller would appreciate you having the most. Um, but there's another ship on this page that also gets used in clans a lot that might be more fun to play. Yeah, definitely. And I think those two uh, will be the two that I'd recommend for that same kind of player, for sure. Um, I, I did want to throw one more thing about the Moskva's radar. You mentioned its duration is pretty decently long. It's also got that faster reload than other Soviet cruisers at this tier, with the exception of Nevsky. Um, and that means that you'll be able to get more bites at the apple, to use a Scott phrase, to more opportunities to shoot at that destroyer that you just radared with your team. Uh, or for your team uh, to help bring that destroyer down that you're bringing down with radar to dra really try to get that DD kill conversion uh, from the usage yeah. of radar. So definitely a lot of reasons to think about Moskva. When Stalingrad first came out, super sweaty Chad clans still used Moskva because of that DPM, even though Stalingrad yep. was, and, and other reasons, but but that was one of the big ones. So anyway. Yeah, other little tidbit on Moskva just to throw yeah. out there because it was a tech tree ship. There is a legendary or a unique module for Moskva. Oh, true. Uh, you can go get from the uh, armory still if you spend research points for, um, and it's not bad. I can't exactly remember the parameters. I know you have it. I do um, have it. But it's not a bad legendary module, and that's one of the, you know, there's only a couple ships in here that are coal ships that have those, and they're the ones that used to be tech tree ships. Um, but that is a thing that exists for Moskva that, you know, there isn't one of those for Yoshino, for example. Right. It extends your main battery range by 8% and reduces main battery dispersion by 7%, but makes your guns turn slower. And you, you put this in slot 6, which means you lose out on main battery mod 3, which increases your uh, reload speed. In other words, buffs your reload speed. So you're giving up a little bit of reload there to get that extra range and accuracy. I don't actually run it, um, but I think some people do. Um, we'll jump to Kaba. Uh, Kaba is one of, in fact, I'm wearing my Clyde Plays Kaba sweatshirt today. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I, I love Kaba very, very much. It's one of my, one of my first loves in this game in terms of a ship that I just really had a lot of fun playing. It's a running gun destroyer. It was the first running gun destroyer. Um, Kaba came out after we had Gearing and Shima. And so in early days, you'd play Gearing, Shima, or Kaba in clan battles. And you probably shouldn't play Kaba, but it was fun to play. So I would do it anyway. <laughs> Eventually switched out to play Gearing and things like that. But um, Kaba's kind of portfolio of things it was good at were kind of separated and given to other ships. That's where the ideas for things like Kleber came from. And we're glad for Kleber, we love Kleber. Um, but Cabo is kind of the first, the granddaddy of that idea. And of course, some of the newer ships do some of those things a little bit better. Um, what makes Cabo special is her, uh, ar she's tanky, she's got good armor, she's got a heal, um, and she's got long range guns if you have the unique upgrade, the legendary module. If you don't, your guns are gonna wind up being about 13 and a half kilometers, which is long enough and it was better back in the day before they nerfed her rudder. We don't need to talk about the past. It's only going to make Clyde sad, I said, speaking in the third person. Um, but back when your rudder was a little bit faster turning, that 13.5 kilometer range was totally acceptable. When they nerfed the rudder to balance the ship a little bit, uh, the legendary mod, which pushes your range out to 13 or 14.8 kilometers, became a lot more valuable to you. So this is a kind of destroyer that I like a lot, a little bit less Scott's cup of tea. Um, but Scott, let me throw it your way. What are your thoughts on Kaba today, 2023, right. December? Yeah, again, uh, Kaba was a Tech Tree Tier 10 Russian gunboat line destroyer until a you know year, a couple of years ago when it was replaced by the Delny and moved to coal ship status. Um, I think it's probably better than the Delny still. I don't think Delny's that great. But yeah. Delny's more like Tashkent, um, like anybody ever would want that. <laughs> um, I, 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 when I, when I was coming up through the game, the very last tech line that existed for me at the time to play for me to get to tier 10 was the line that ended with Kaba. It was the one I did last. I, I was, I played destroyers last. I played through the tech line destroyers last. I learned destroyers and I didn't, and then I played through gunboat destroyers last because really gunboats weren't my jam. 
um, that didn't have smoke. Um, obviously, you can smoke in Kaaba, but uh, Clyde was like, nope, nope. If you're playing those boats, you use the heel. The smoke's not for you. And so I was like, okay. And I mean, so I, didn't I, use, I may have an opinion on what I, I didn't use the, right the smokes on that line. <laughs> and I got this line to I finished Tashkent so that I could unlock Kaaba right around the time that it was going to leave the game. So that made sure I got it for free without buying it for coal. I researched it. I never bought it. Then I got it and I was like, well, everybody, Clyde loves this ship. I'm going to go play it. And I went to play it. And I'm like, this ship's terrible. The gun range is like three kilometers less than Tashkent. Why would you play this? And you're like, nah, the gun range is great, bro. Oh, wait. That's only if you have the unique module. <laughs> and when I realized I was then going to have to spend 20,000 research points to make this ship even playable for the way that I played Tashkent, which I didn't enjoy, I immediately took this ship and towed it out back and shot it in the face. And yeah. it sat there ever since. And Scott I and I didn't no talk use for, for it. three weeks. <laughs> he was yeah, not... I, I mean, I'm glad I didn't spend coal on it, and I'm glad I only researched it with Tashkent XP, and I didn't mm. really buy it. Um, yeah. But I've never really played it for anything. I've got a cool camo for it. I've got a Transformers camo for it that looks really neat. Mm, I don't um, have that one. That is a good cool And uh, And, uh, and uh, I never play it, and I think it's sad that... I think this ship would be fun to play if I had that unique module, and I'll never get it. And I think it sucks that it doesn't come with it, because without it, it is terrible compared... And Tashkent's not fun. But, but you play through Kiev and, and Tashkent and you have this like build where you have like 15-ish, 16-ish kilometer gun range and that's how you, you're moving at speed and you're shooting at kind of maximum ranges and you're building fires and it's a certain play style. And then I get to this thing and it's like, ah, oh, the guns shoot like 12. Best of luck. There's no rudder. It's 13.5. If you want to yeah, turn it, if you want to turn it, Igor on the back throws an anchor overboard and you hope for the best. <laughs> Uh, and so it's just not my thing. Um, and so uh, I would contend, it, and it's expe 240,000 coal. Like, are you kidding me? Like, don't go buy Marceau. Uh, it's it's just not my thing. I, I, wish, I wish I had the unique module for it and I wish it had yeah. a rudder. I might like it then, but as it stands, I play it twice a year. Uh, and now I don't even have to, but I would say I play it twice a year to knock off a snowflake. But now I can play something fun and earn an extra snowflake that way and not have to play, <laughs> oh, combat, which I appreciate. The the absolute yin and yang that we have about yeah. this boat is so it, yeah. it's actually kind of delightful because I think people get a little bit of perspective of two very different ways to feel about this ship and to play it. Um, Mother Oni talks a little bit about Delny's firing angles being a bit better. Another thing I want to talk about Delny, and I Delny has way less DPM than Kaba because Kaba has eight guns with a similar reload, whereas Delny only has six. Delny has a 15.1 kilometer main battery range without buying any unique modules. And it has, I think, a five second rudder shift instead of like a 10 or 11 or whatever it is. On and Kaba. like 10 kilometer torpedoes, which Kaba and 10 has kilometer what, torpedoes. Four kilometer torpedoes? Six uh, kilometer torpedoes? Sixes, which are, yeah. If you're getting torped in the Kaba, boy, did you make a mistake. Yeah. By the Kaba. I, you, yeah. Did you make a mistake? It's such a weird ship. It has great armor. And the guns are really cool, like if you could use them. But like, I don't want to drive around at 10 kilometers in this boat because I feel like without a rudder, I'm going to get douched. Yeah. So well, and, it, and it's it's tough, right? And and I have this is the only tier ten ship I have on my EU account because I ground it so I would get it for free as a coal ship, mm -hmm. and then uh, be able to get you know Delny without much effort. I have not bothered to grind Delny, and I have played clan battles on there as a merc with my EU friends a couple of times, and and I forget that I don't have the uh, legendary mod, and I've played it with my thirteen point five kilometer concealment and a seventeen point captain or whatever I have over there. Um, which is my best captain. Um, and it's harder, you know, it's different. It's not impossible, <laughs> but it's it's harder, right? And and your laugh yeah. is perfectly acceptable, bring it on, right? I mean, it's harder, man. You, that it's unique harder. module makes a difference. And so if you do love the idea of Kaba, but you're like, damn, this sucks. The way I play this, I play this on my RPs, EU account. You know. I play this in clan battles on my EU account over there. Said the CC that nobody would let you do that if you were to CC in a streamer. If you were just some random guy, they'd be like, take a flying F and a rolling donut, American. We don't like, want you playing clan battles with this. <laughs> yeah, they already didn't want me because I was a filthy American. And then I yeah. said, all I have is Dakaba. And they're like, and they're either thinking, well, it's either don't play or let this dork play, I guess. We'll they're play. like, I guess we could let this guy play because maybe he'll give us a, a CC crate whoa like, <laughs> that's that's an ethical breach of contract um we would never do that but uh definitely yeah to to go over there and say hey can i play kaba in your clan battle it's not a good 
<laughs> it's not ideally the pick that most uh, clans would choose, but there's some four fun clans over there that don't mind having me around every once in a while. <laughs> we would not be able to do that beyond, you know, silver or gold or whatever. Um, yeah, anyway, that's Kaba. I, to save time, I think, well, not to save time, but to not waste any more time, uh, we should move on. Um, I want to save that middle row for last because I think those are three really interesting ships. Two of them are new to this list. Um, let's jump to Kerr first. Uh, and I, I started off, I think, for Kaba. You want to cover Kerr first for us? Sure. So, again, Kerr first used to be the Tech 3 Tier 10 German battleship. Uh, at some point, they decided that they needed to replace it with the Preussen which is right. the same hull, but with 457s instead of the guns on the Kerfurst. So Kerfurst, the design language of Kerfurst and how the tech line used to work is you got to Frederick de Grossa and you head. You went from eight guns on Bismarck. You went from eight 380s on Bismarck. When you went to Frederick de Grossa, you had eight 406s, and then you could upgrade the Frederick de Grossa's main battery to 420s. Then when you got to Grossa Kerfurst, you had the... Um, the you had instead of having eight you had 12 and it was the same thing you could have 406s or you could buy alternate barrels and you could have like the 420s right and the 420s have a little bit slower reload and it was like a big debate back in the day between like Kerfer's chads like whether you use the 406s or the 420s and if it really mattered because <laughs> 420s were that much better yeah. blah 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 and then somebody said well that's dumb the tech the top tier the ten, the tier 10 should be that ship but it should have 457s and only eight of them we should only ever have eight guns and they should just get bigger and so Kerfurst got the boot and became a coal boat. Yeah. Uh, which I think only made Kerfurst even more popular because there, a bunch of people were like, I can go get that for coal now, and it's cool, and it has secondaries, and you could just run around in it and be a maniac, right? And it's a gigantic ship, and it has a huge hit point pool and a massive superstructure that gets farmed with HE by everybody. Um, but sentimentally, a lot of people like Kerfurst because of what it was and what it always has been. Wearaboos love it. I like Kerfurst. Yeah. Yeah. Kerfurst was the first tier 10 battleship that I unlocked in the game because I wanted the giant secondary tanky crazy Kerr first. Um, and it's fun That's because thing of people that. want. Like it is fun. Secondary boats are yeah. fun, even though they're yeah. kind of stupid. They're fun. Yeah. And Kerr first is, is no it, exception. Is it as good as Schlieffen? No. Is it as good as Preussen? It's different because Preussen has 457s and I don't actually play Preussen as a secondary battleship. I play it differently so weird right um but but i have a lot of different battles in kerfers because it was around and played kerfers a ton and like you know you can go farm junk and co-ops and it does this that and the other thing um kerfers has uh hydros it doesn't have torpedoes yeah um got it's huge it's slow to get going once it gets going it's hard to stop um but it's just kind of an interesting ship uh it's been around for a long time and i think it's a real popular coal boat for people to go get um, once it became a coal boat i almost feel like i started seeing it more um, than I did before. And there was, it was always popular before. There was a rash of people who scooped it up when it went coal, or people who ground mm -hmm. it before it went coal. And we saw a lot of these for a while in randoms, at least on NA, right? Um, and I'm sure it was true to a certain extent globally. But um, yeah, but yeah, you know, Kerr First is a boat that you'll always see at some point in games, right? It's not going away. Um, it's maintained a certain level of popularity, which is kind of actually special about this boat is it like top shelf top tier perfect boat for everything no is it fun yeah it is it's a fun boat to play and um there used to be really really bad dispersion and bad sigma and stuff like that on these german bbs and they got buffed what's been now years ago yeah. um and so they, yeah, they can the kind of hit stuff at range yeah in a certain they, degree. they pretty much have the same dispersion as american battleships right um, yeah so yeah so that that's a lot better than it used to be um and so and with you 12 can, shells you can like you're gonna hit stuff. you know with more yeah. range yeah and so so yeah it's it and and it's also a ship uh that that it is even better in modes with less people i wouldn't yeah. say that you yeah. we still see them in clan battles i don't know that you, you should but no. people still play clan battles. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody's using them in ranked. I'm sure, like in brawls and things like that, where there's less people oh, yeah. when they're in tier ten, that they're, it's still a popular ship. Because when there's less stuff that can crack away at it, it is really tanky. Yeah. Um, but in a, but in randoms, it's a like I remember playing Smolensk and uh, first time I played Smolensk, I got a, a Witherer against a Kerr first because you could just it just has so much superstructure and you could just burn the bejesus out of it. And and it's always the long-standing joke that Kerr first players' keyboards only have W. 
they just yeah. <laughs> it's just one just, button just, no i go forward and i try to get in secondary range and secondaries go burr <laughs> and i die doing it right and um and but but it's a fun ship if you play it right and yeah. um yeah. it can still be used in modern world warships um you know i think it's still a fun ship yeah um, can I, I'm gonna pre- not pretend that I know anything about Immelman this time. Uh, every time we do this this show, I'm like, let me see if I can guess some things about Immelman. Can you just give us a, a quick description of Immelman? I think you played it more than me. I don't think you consider yourself an expert, just for the information of the audience. Yeah. But Immelman, uh, again, tier ten German aircraft carrier um, for a long time was the only coal aircraft carrier. Uh, Immelman was the first shipping game that had skip bombers as an armament type. Um, it was kind of the test bed for those. Um, <laughs> excuse me, if memory serves. Uh, and again, I I haven't played it in a while, but I don't. I think as far as its aircraft go, um, it only has skip bombers and torpedo bombers. Uh, it doesn't have rocket planes, right? And so when people think of German carriers on the tech line, they think of like AP rockets and high altitude uh, AP bombers. This has uh, skip bombers that create fires and then it has torpedo bombers and the torpedo the torpedo bombers on it are a little bit more functional than i think the tech line ones i feel like they have a better damage alpha might just be that they put down more torpedoes Mm -hmm. the planes are quick the 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 speed on the planes is really good compared to the tech line germans and and really compared to a lot of tier 10 carriers um but again only having two types of planes you can deploy uh kind of makes it interesting as far as uh somebody trying to play carrier i don't I don't think people anybody should go buy a tier 10 carrier as their first carrier with coal and then just start going playing randoms because um that's a great way to have everybody in the world hate you um yeah if you don't know a, if you don't know how to play carriers way. don't learn how to play carriers that way please and thank you um and i don't think Immelman is extremely powerful but um <clears throat> it's I, I think it's interesting and i don't think it's a bad ship i haven't played it in a long time i think some of the things i do with like the bear and the tier six French um, mm, carrier. Yeah. I think yeah. some of those same things I could probably do with Immelman skip bombers that I do with the Beer and skip bombers, like hunting destroyers and things, and it might be interesting. Um, yeah, but I, I don't. Do. I don't. It's not a tier ten carrier that I reach for. I don't play a lot of tier ten carrier anyway. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's it's a big German, you know, carrier. So it is what it is in that regard. Yeah, I, I do like the two kinds of ordnance, and you can just kind of focus on getting good at those, and that's kind of cool. I don't think it's the easiest carrier on this list, and there's only two, um, and I don't think that it's the one I would go for first. And so we'll jump and we'll talk about Malta next. Um, Malta came out uh, last fall, a very popular ship. Uh, it was initially sold for cash and then available for coal like a month later. Um, and it's it's a great carrier. It's actually really powerful. Um, it's got AP bomber, AP carpet bombers, which is great against the light cruisers. Um, it's got uh, very durable airplanes and uh, good regen on the airplanes. And so you you can run around and make mistakes about your approaches with the aircraft carrier, with, with, with Malta's planes, and still have planes later in the battle. Um, so, you know, Scott had just said the thing, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I don't recommend that anybody goes and gets a tier 10 carrier and they go, I'm going to learn carriers today, tier 10s and randoms. Um, I think Malta is probably more accessible. Mm-hmm. It's differently more accessible probably than Immelman. I think it's more accessible than Immelman to a player who is learning carriers, but don't start here. Um, start at a lower tier um, and learn carriers a little bit there because it's very critical, even with the changes to carriers a couple of few years ago. Um, it's very critical uh, for your team that you kind of have some idea what you're doing. I do think these are great carrier. Uh, uh, the Malta is a great carrier to get and add to your port if you like aircraft carriers. I'm not a CV main, um, but I've, I've grown to kind of enjoy Malta um, and uh, and recommend her to people who are of the carrier persuasion. In a few weeks, I don't know exactly when, I'm going to do a um, fireside chat, uh, which is another podcast type episode with uh, Twitch streamer Angelic Cypher. We're going to talk about a bunch of carrier things. Hopefully you guys will join us for that as well. Um, but Scott, uh, thoughts on carrier Malta? Uh, yeah, Malta is really powerful the um the ap carpet bombers just crush light cruisers so the kind of cruisers that tier 10 carriers think they need to avoid like minotaur brisbane smolens worcester stuff that has tends to have good aa um those carpet bombers shatter they just citadel the bejesus out of them um so 
you don't avoid those targets with this. You go hammer them, and it's really good at it. On top of that, its torpedo planes are also really usable and do good damage. They are. Um, I didn't even and then it, and, and then you also have rocket planes as well that light fires and stuff, and that's like the last thing I go for on it. I'm not a carrier player. Um, I have 229 registered random battles on my account in aircraft carriers. My personal damage record in World of Warships is in Malta. Uh, yeah. So, like, yeah. like, like, without trying, like, and that's kind of... Like, I'm not a good carrier player, but I have the most damage in anything ever in a random was in Malta. And so um, I'm not proud of that, but that <laughs> gives you an, that gives somebody an idea, gives somebody an idea like that, that somebody who doesn't yeah. play carriers yeah. that much. Uh, again, 229 registered carrier battles and randoms. Um, I, you know, I had my PR in Malta. So um, and it's not a huge PR. It's only 205,000. But again, like, you know it's not it's a ship that you can do that in so um please don't go buy this ship if you don't know how to play carriers and you haven't tried playing carriers before please um please pick a tech line and work through a tech line um and learn how to play carriers at lower tiers and then get a malta and go cause hell and wreak havoc but yeah malta is yeah. really powerful yeah. in fact if 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 they didn't have the policy where they can nerf uh these kind of ships now that they didn't used to have um, I would say that this is a ship that could be pulled like in the old way that they got rid of Thunder or Smolens where it was too popular, which meant it was overpowered. Yeah. Um, this ship is overpowered, but uh, they could nerf it and they just haven't. Um, and I'm surprised by that, that they haven't. Well, we haven't seen more adjustments there, but Nakamov, Nakamov's overpowered, too, and they haven't nerfed it either. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to use that phrase that people say about carriers and how it's being protected, but um you know, some people might have some conspiracy theories there. I would never. Uh, Malta's Malta's a good ship, though. And if you're a carrier player, it's the best carrier, in my opinion, on the coal ship list. So yep. an easy yeah, recommendation for anybody easy. who's looking for a carrier. It's easily way better and, and easier to play than Max, than Immelman. Immelman's yeah. not hard to play, but Malta but just generates Malta's way more damage. Malta's just better. So um, if you're looking for a carrier, that's the one to get. Um, mm -hmm. Our next row here uh, goes from Brisbane to Napoli to U4501. Scotta, do you want to take the Brisbane and talk Brizzy? Brisbane is relatively new. This, I think we're finally to ships that we may not have talked about in the last yeah. iteration of this uh, video. Um, so Brisbane came into the coal store this year. Um, yes. After yes. being introduced and then ha having like a long holdout period. Uh, Brisbane is, if you look at Brisbane, Brisbane is a Minotaur. Looks like the British Tech Line Tier 10 Minotaur. Uh, but it's a Commonwealth Tier 10 cruiser, and it has differences. The guns don't reload as fast as Minotaur, but it offers HE as well as AP. Um, it has good torpedoes. I think they actually go further than Minotaurs, but uh, I might do. be wrong 13, about that. I think they're 13.5 um, kilometers. I'll check here as soon as I'm done with yeah. the panorama. Uh, Brisbane has 12 kilometer radar. Uh, it does not offer smoke in any way, shape, or form. Most Commonwealth ships have crawling smoke. Um, Brisbane does no smoke because it has a 12 kilometer radar, which is nuts because, like, the only other stuff with 12 kilometer radar is Russian. Uh, look at all those torpedoes, like 10 per side. Uh, yeah, that's insane. That's, I wanted that's, to highlight that. Right? Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, Brisbane has really good AA because of the kind of ship it is. Um, it, it's, uh, I like Brisbane. Brisbane's fun to play. I haven't played it a lot and I haven't played it in a while. Um, but I, I think it offers an interesting play style difference over Minotaur and the fact that it has the HE, the reload's not horrific. It's, you know, it's still like in the sixes, um, you know, but it has a lot of guns and you can light fires. You can do, you can do work with the AP. It has good torpedoes. And then it has that great radar, which is really good. That 12 kilometer radar is like nothing to sneeze at. Um, downsides are that it's like a squishy light cruiser, um, like Minotaur, you know, you can get, yeah. you know, if you, if you don't know how to play those, you're going to get your, your can shot off in it. Uh, what's your take on Brisbane? I, I really like Brisbane. I like light cruisers. Um, my reload, you were talking about the reload there is down to 4.4 seconds in it. Uh, we did confirm the torpedoes are 13.5 kilometers, 12 kilometer, uh, radar, as you mentioned, um, the concealment, uh, is sub 10 kilometers. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the concealment super low. You can like stealth yeah. radar all day long. 
So it's it's a really strong ship, you know, unless you get spotted, in which case it has no armor, right? I like that Mother Oni's comment says, Brisbane's like a minnow with HE, plays like minnow and gets deleted. Absolutely true. Um, you know, it's not unlike minnow in the way that you play it, but you do have some extra special care you have to play with because of your lack of smoke, your, your inability to hide. Now, some people, you know, turbo minnow chads who only play it as radar minnow, sure. Um, and this is fairly similar to that play style um, if you're going radar style on that ship. Um, but Brisbane's great. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have emotional highs and lows. You're going to do amazing things with it. You're going to get amazingly deleted just as soon as, you know, you get spotted with it. You need to learn to love your islands and, and everything. You can do some open water work in it. You will jump island to island and there will be times when you're exposed and those times are very dangerous and so the excitement is high and you can do a lot with her. Uh, those torpedoes are a big part of her armament, right? Stealth torpedo, stealth radar, stealth, 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 right? So anytime you can stay dark is good for you. Um, it's risky. You want to play close to caps, but that's hard to do. So, you know, finding a place where you can survive is is a big part of playing this ship well. I'm not an expert in, in Brisbane. I think I'm serviceable in it. If I was on your team in a Brisbane, you wouldn't be mad about it but you might not be like excited about it either. Um, and so, you know, take all of my words with that kind of a grain of salt. Um, good ship though. I think Brisbane is worthy of your coal, not just because she's new, but because she's legitimately a good ship. But if you're a person who does not survive in light cruisers, you won't have fun. And I want you to, mm -hmm. I want you to have fun with anything you buy, right? If you need an A gear to be happy, um, Brisbane's not going to do it for you. That's, I don't know, any rebuttal on any of that before we jump along? Uh, no, the one other thing I would say is that yeah. current, um, there's no tech lines for the Commonwealth in the game at current. As of the time of recording, today they announced that they're adding a tech line of Commonwealth cruisers to World Warships in the future. Mm -hmm. At current, there is none. So there is no good way to have a high point captain for this ship other than playing a captain on the ship or another Commonwealth premium ship that you may have. Recommender XPing other... one. Yeah. Or, you, you or making one, one with Commander XP, right? And so yeah. that part of it is the biggest drawback for most people. You basically have to free XP a captain or you have to build a captain playing this ship or another um, Commonwealth premium ship. There's, you know, Vampire 2 is a research bureau ship uh, that's a destroyer. Hector is another light cruiser that's a research bureau ship. But Hector in my opinion, you would have a different build on than you would have on Brisbane because of some differences between how the two ships work. You definitely and so, would. So not really great there, right? And so that's the hardest part about Brisbane is you have to like, you have to basically buy, like you have to take a captain and free XP them probably up to 18 points to be comfortable, at least 16 probably to be usable. This boat wants a higher point captain just because yeah. it's, it's, yeah got a lot of demands in order to be really strong yeah. and, and, and survivable. Um, yeah. got a in the future, in, go ahead. I, I just say in the future when they do release a Commonwealth cruiser line, yep. I do not know if a Brisbane captain will translate to the tier 10 in that line because what they announced today, the tier eight, the tier nine and the tier 10 in that line are cruisers with 203 millimeter guns and crawling smoke and not radar. Um, right. And so I don't know that you would build them the same way as Brisbane or Hector. And so that kind of comes into play as well. So it may not really be a captain trainer situation either. Yeah, my suspicion is it's gonna, they're going to need a different captain than Brisbane, but that's okay. Um, yep. If you build up a 21-pointer here and then you decide you like the tech line better, retrain them. You know, it's not yep. a bad thing to have a 21 or, a, or even a 15 or an 18-point captain, right? Yep. Um, Comment in chat says the issue is if you're using Brisbane as an alternative for your util utility cruisers like DM and Moskva, you're better off using Nezki. This sounds like a comment about um, competitive play, and I and I think that's very true. Uh, we did see Brisbane show up in things like King of the Sea because of ship bans, however. Um, also, it was new. It was the new hotness, and the and the the Chads once they had all of their favorite ships banned, had to look around and see what had utility. And Brisbane had some of that. So, do I think you're going to choose Brisbane over Nevsky? Uh, I would not in a competitive statement or a competitive situation. Um, however, I think there may be situations depending on what kind of competitive you're playing in tournament play, things like that, where you may uh, find yourself needing to look for an alternative to your favorite Reach Four ships. Um, 
uh, yeah. So Napoli is our next one here. Just continuing along Napoli, very popular in clan battles, very tanky, fairly low DPM from the mains, um, but reliable DPM, we'll say. Um, secondary cruiser, of course, uh, with sap secondaries, high volume of fire, fairly accurate secondaries, or very accurate secondaries, I should say, with good range. Um, she's got slow, long-range torpedoes. Um, Napoli is, is, is a well-known uh, treat at this point for people who uh, do clan battles or ranked battles. Um, and uh, and so most of you have probably heard about all of the wonderful things about Napoli. Um, and I like Napoli too. I do wish that the AP punched a little harder when I need it to do something special. In clan battles, it often doesn't. Um, but you can start fires with the HE. Uh, and the AP is not, not worth using. Um, it just is a ship that gets damaged slowly over time through survival, not through massive alpha damage. Um, it just lives so long that it eventually scrapes together a respectable damage number. Um, and that's that's kind of Napoli's thing. She's got very good concealment. Uh, she's relatively speedy. She's got a oil smoke that lets her uh, be concealed in motion with, I think, like an eight kilometer uh, smoke firing penalty. Um, Napoli's just reliable, good, and often restricted in clan battles, if that's a thing that you're interested in. It's a great ship, I think, for a player to get into. Um, and uh, Scotty, you alluded earlier to the idea that your caller, your, your team assembler, is gonna prefer that maybe you bring something like a Moskva because everybody wants to play Napoli. Napoli's so fun. Do you wanna talk through some of your thoughts on that, maybe? Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as far as what you could buy here, if you're trying to be like a if I'm trying to get a ship here that I can use in competitive modes, right? I think you know, Mosfa, Napoli, to an extent, Salem are probably those ships. Uh -huh. um, Napoli uh, has no sensors um, like Italian cruisers. It doesn't have SAP main batteries. Its gimmick is that it has SAP secondaries. Recently, there's been a change to captain builds uh, where a skill called Pack-A-Punch was created and extends secondary range and torpedo damage on cruisers. So it's a skill that everybody's now taking on this ship. Um, so you can have, you know, like 12 or 11 something kilometer secondaries on it. It does have extremely accurate secondaries um, for a cruiser. You can't manually target them like you can if you build into secondaries on a battleship, but it has that. Um, it, the main battery, again, they're 254s. The AP is fine. I find that the AP tends to overpen things I don't want it to and sh and not work on things I need it to. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have, have very high... <laughs> it doesn't have very high gun DPM. It's not really great at starting fires with its HE, but you can try. Um, it's just really tanky, and it has crawling smoke and those secondaries and, and decent torpedoes. And so... Um, in in competitive modes, it's just kind of it takes a while to kill, and you can you can wreak havoc with it. Um, you can do a lot of those similar things with it in randoms, but I think more the more it gets targeted, the less interesting it is. Uh, but again, it's a fun ship. It's also really fun if you're looking for something to dork around with in co-ops or if asymmetric battles are available to you yeah. when you have when this when you're watching this. Yeah, and it's fun in those modes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, really popular ship. Uh, very popular in uh, clan battles regulated a lot of the time um but yeah um you know it, it's a it's an interesting ship but uh i i don't dislike playing napoli uh in competitive but that has more to do with the fact that i don't like playing radar cruisers where i have to park and be <laughs> static i like being able to move around and and, yeah. and 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 be on the move so um but yeah I, you know it's eh, you know i i guess it's claim to fame as sap secondaries with smoke because um, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'd, as far as main battery goes I'd rather play Venezia and just crush things with its really good uh, sap main battery so yeah but, Venezia's uh, definitely yeah. got the guns I mean the, the guns on Venezia are better right you know uh, what you said about the mains uh, you know the AP doesn't do anything that you want it to do when you're asking it to do that thing totally true um, definitely a uh, uh, a boat that survivability and some of its tricks the smoke the secondaries make a big difference um, I feel like Napoli is pretty well known in the community, and I think we gave a pretty good portrait of it there. Um, yeah. But definitely one that, you know, for uh, I think it's my first tier 10 coal ship that I got on my EU account. So I prioritized that so that I could um, actually take something other than cob. I lied earlier because I forgot that I got Napoli over there. So now I have two <laughs> tier 10 boats on that on that account, um, which is a good thing. Um, 
in terms of options. But those are both boats that people are going to compete for for slots in clan battles. So if you if this is going to be your only ship you can play in clan battles, you know, please do yeah. your caller a favor and get another choice. Please yeah, take again, two ships to clan battles. Again, hey EU guys, I'm a CC and a Twitch streamer. Let me play the fun ship that I have. I didn't oh, get Moskva instead. That's they've more never let me useful. play Napoli. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> and I've never asked, but um, but definitely take two ships to clan battles. You're, uh, you know, I'm working to get my uh, daring over there too, which I don't like as much as either of those boats. But I would play daring over there. Um, the last boat on our list is the boat that uh, I've played once, twice, maybe. Do you have U forty five hundred one in your port, Scotta? Okay, good deal. Um, I'm going to bring it up here on the screen. U4501 is our first ever coal submarine. Um, and uh, she's here, right? She's weird, though. Unlike most of the other submarines, um, she is faster underwater than she is on the surface, which is a very, very unique attribute for this ship. And she's also got more torpedoes in the back of the ship than in the front of the ship. Um, I found i've only played her once i think um, and i found her really entertaining to play just because she's so different than the other subs that i've played um i've played all of the tier 8 premiums i've played all of the tech trees up through tier 6 and i think one or two of maybe one of them at tier 8 um but i i haven't played the tier 10 boat so you know take all of the things that i say with a the inexperience of somebody who hasn't played uh the the tier 10 tech lines i have played gato um, and I like Gato 2 well enough, uh, but this boat definitely has some unique attributes. The ability to sink and then like rip a good distance away and then come back up is very unique to the ship in terms of how fast you can do that, which I found really entertaining. Um, Scott, uh, thinking about U4501 and its unique abilities, what makes it something you would choose over another submarine maybe? And, and then we'll start talking about whether or not you choose it over another ship on the coal list maybe. Yeah, you know, um, at tier 10, I wouldn't choose it over probably anything other than maybe Thrasher. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of Thrasher, which is the tech tree the British, British tier 10. Yeah. Um, I would rather play U2501, the tech line German. But uh, you see a lot of U4501s because it's coal, um, right? It's kind of right. the same thing. Like we said, don't go get a coal. Uh, CV and play that if you don't know what you're doing and U4501 is going to have that same effect, right? This is one of the reasons People... I have not been playing it, right? Yeah. I don't, I'm not skilled so, enough to be comfortable. U4501 has got a lot of weird gimmicks that other subs don't have in that, like you said, um, it goes really fast underwater. When submerged, it's screaming fast, like comedically fast. You can't chase it down fast. Um, so if one of them submerged, just give up on, like, don't think you're going to CPA it and depth charge it with a destroyer. You're just not, because it's just so, unless you're maybe in a Marceau or a Flaubert or something, um, cause it's just so fast. Um, it has four torpedo launchers forward and six aft. So like it has a gimmicky play style where if you really know what you're doing, you're putting yourself in a position to vomit torpedoes out of the aft and drive really fast away from getting depth charged. Right. Now, the, the downside of that is that it doesn't have um, dumb fire torpedoes. It only has homing torpedoes, if memory serves. And the range on them is 10 kilometers, but the alpha damage is not great on them. It's not terrible. It's like 9,200, but it's not as good as like a U2501's dumb fire torpedoes or a Baleo's dumb fire torpedoes. Um, so it's got that, right? It only has like homing torps that are like... They're fast. They go 82 knots. Most most submarine torpedoes are stupid fast. It's something we don't need to talk about. Um, right. But anyway, that's part of the deal. The other thing that it has that memory, if memory serves, no other submarine has is it has a heel. Um, so you can only use it when surfaced, but it has great surface concealment because it's a submarine, right? It's like 5.4 base conceal on the surface. Um, and you can heal which you can't do in other subs. So there's that, which is kind of forgiving and nice. Um, just talking about the mechanics of it, uh, I'm not looking at the stream right now, um, and I'm not really interested in people's opinions on submarines in general. We're just talking about this for the show. But um, yeah, so yeah, that's how it's different. Like U2501, the Techline German sub works totally differently. Gato, obviously the steel submarine works totally differently. Balao right, and Thrasher. Right, right. Thrasher. Thrasher actually a lot more similar because Thrasher also um 
Because they only, has... only have homing torpedoes, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the British only yeah. have homing, and they're way weaker. They go further, but they're slower, and they do way less damage um, than the uh, than the U-4501. So, but yeah, so U-4501 is kind of interesting in that regard, because you... You can put it into a position where what your intent is to do is to be submerged and drive away really fast while shooting torpedoes out the aft. Uh, it's just kind of a weird design, but it was yeah, a real design. Yeah. It, it was a real steel design. It, it's not like a made-up board gaming thing. Um, so kind of interesting. Um, dive capacity on it isn't amazing uh, right, compared to right. some of the other tier 10s. Maneuverability, we've, ta we've talked about this before. My opinion on submarine maneuverability is that they, they handle like battleships. <laughs> uh, yes. You know they yes. they handle like battleships, but they and they have really crappy torpedo launching angles in comparison to like destroyers, in my opinion, right? Yeah. But um, you know the the fact that it's underwater maneuvering is like thirty six knots is is just kind of crazy, right? It just really cooks underwater. So, uh, and then there's other there's captain skills, submarine captain skills, like the uh, uh, there's one that has to do with like your 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 drive shaft. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it's called. Propeller enlarged propeller whatever. shaft, yeah. right? Yeah, that that, that, that makes, makes you go, go faster, faster on the surface and at periscope depth. So that helps it, and mm -hmm. that might be a skill that you'd take on that sub. So anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's the last new submarine that's been introduced in the game. We're kind of in a place right now where I feel like Wargaming has taken a pause on introducing new submarines. Uh, they have not introduced the uh, Russian Tech Tree submarines, which. Um, my understanding is they've already been introduced mm -hmm. in the Mira Karabli game and they just haven't been introduced here. So they're done in that way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing and it's a coal boat. I think it's popular. I see a lot of them get played. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know so, a number of players you know, on the Discord have said, well, I didn't have anything else to buy. So I bought this. I thought I'd give it a try. Right. So I think that's part of what's yeah. going on with this one. Yeah. Um, we had a comment in chat from uh, Eli Cassian who said, uh, it's fast underwater, only in a straight line. If it turns, its speed drops a lot. Um, yeah. And you can play it well behind enemy ships. Um, and then says uh, it's a real terror in asymmetric battles, right? So, you know, honestly, right now, asymmetric battles would be a cool opportunity to try this boat out. Um, if you want to go in there, you don't want to grief humans while you're learning submarines mm -hmm. and you have this one, um, feel free to try it out in asims right now. What a great opportunity. Uh, if. Uh, hey, Sims is a great opportunity to play out. any submarines right now. If you want to, yeah, if, if you, you want to go play subs. submarines, submarines and co-op sucks. Uh, yeah, but in Sims, there's so many more it. targets that it's a little bit more realistic, and the way the bots operate is a little bit different. Um, yeah, so I think if you want to go tinker, and because you can play Sims with a time of recording right now, all the way down to tier six, um, you can play any submarines in there, right? So, yeah, um, yeah that's not a bad idea. Uh, I see a lot of these in randoms, though, and oh, it yeah. takes all kinds. You see people that seem to know what they're doing and people who definitely don't. That's kind of how submarines are in general, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another one, he says the bots are smarter in ASIMs, and, and that's true, um, to a certain extent, at least. So, again, take, if you guys are submarine curious right now, and I know we understand that there's a lot of tension in the world in the world of world warships right now about subs. Uh, we're not interested in that at the moment, but um, for those of you guys who want to maybe give submarines a try, ASIMs is a great opportunity to try that, um, where you can learn and, uh, and experiment, like you said, target-rich environment, things like that. Um, but that's probably the extent of what we can share with you in terms of our experience and stuff at 4501. Um, like I said, when I played it, I, I could tell that it was different than the other submarines I'd played, and I thought it was at least interesting, but I can't say if I think it's strong, if I think it's, you know, um, a boat that you should rush out and get. I think if you're thinking about a submarine and you have coal, this is your only choice. Uh, if you have steel, you can look at Gato, and of course, everybody can get the ones in the tech line. Uh, the German tech line destroyers are really strong. Uh, at least I really enjoy the tier six. I haven't had a chance to uh, get into the tier eight yet on that line. Um, but the tier six is probably the best tier six destroyer is the one in the German yeah, tech line. The, the German, the German <clears throat> tech line is probably the most forgiving. Uh, I think it's the, you know, of the tech line subs. Um, I like U2501 better than Balau. Uh, if I had to rate the five tier 10 uh, submarines, U4501 would probably be fourth of five for me. Mm, um, okay. After but just as far ahead as, of the thrasher, like you said, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I just don't like the British. I don't like the way Thrasher plays. But that might just be me. I've played a lot of Thrashers, and I've had people thrash me with Thrasher. Ew. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't, I don't prefer, like Thrasher very much. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd rather play two five zero one Gato or Balao before I'd play you four five zero one. But uh, anyway, um, right, right, right. four five zero one. It's it's again. It's not obscure. It's not super weird. It's just not no. the same. It's no. definitely different than U two five zero one. The the yeah. tech line. So in the interest of time, I'm keeping you up way too late. Let's take a quick look at our tier 10s. Um, if you were taking three tier 10s, however you want to think about it, what are those tier 10s? We've got this page here, and I can flip back to the other one too. Yeah, if I'm, I, did I close my browser? I had a list here. I've, so I had the, I've had ship tool open all night. Let me look at the 10s here really quick. Yeah, go for it. Um, five classes represented now. Um, you know, we've got the soup to nuts here. Uh, personal preferences and what I use the most. Um, I have a hard time not picking Napoli because I just use it a lot in plans it's and it's pick. also fun. Yeah. It's also fun in like ASIMs and stuff. Although, um, lately I've been kind of frustrated with it. Um, you know, it sucks to say, but Malta's great. Malta is um, great. Malta's, she's powerful. Malta's, she's yeah. she's fun. I don't, you know, I I know people <laughs> like to be me. like carriers, but 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 it's fun to play Malta. It just yeah. is. Yeah. So you know, probably you know, probably Malta, and then and then um, probably Marceau. I, I like Marceau. Mm, I don't yeah. I don't yeah. like Marceau a whole lot in randoms, but that has more to do with my comfort in playing gunboat DDs and randoms. But <clears throat> um, Marceau is really good if you need to like go into a co-op and farm some certain things for like some missions or some stuff you can go get work done in marceau like if you need shell hits and mm -hmm. you know stuff like that it's pretty good at doing those kind of things and i have played it in randoms and had a good time uh with it as well um i've also played it i think in competitive a little bit because you can actually marceau is actually uh, one of the few destroyers on this list that you actually would see in competitive modes yeah that's a that's a real true statement for sure um Speaking of uh, like competitive, like if I was a more of a competitive bent player, I think I'd be looking at Moskva, Napoli, and Marceau for the reasons that we talked about throughout the night. Um, I think those three would be the ones I would go for if I was full on competitive. That was all I cared about. Um, thinking about just ships that I think are fun. Um, you know, I've got to throw Kaba on the list because I'm a Kaba stan. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. There's nothing else I can say about it. I think that boat's fun. Um, so Kaba is going to be on my list for sure. Um, I think Napoli makes a list because I do play some competitive, right? I, I like to play Napoli in clan battles every once in a while when given the chance. Um, I like Brisbane. I like your Malta pick. It'd probably be one of those two. Um, there's a lot of DDs on this list, but honestly, none of them are like other than Kaba, are really like, I love that boat so much, right? Um, Sherman, I know, is popular, but it's not really my kind of destroyer because I got to have a little more speed than that. But I, I yeah. bet a lot of players would choose Sherman, and I think that's a very mm -hmm. good choice. For me, it's probably Kaba, Napoli, probably Brisbane before Malta because I get more mileage out of it, but I like Malta too. So if I was yeah. picking four, I'd throw that one in there. Yeah, you know, a lot of people love Sherman. Um... I, when I have played Sherman and I've had good games in it, we always lose. Um, that is, so well, Sherman's really so, good at getting damage on a loss. So like I don't, I don't, uh, yeah. I don't have fond like memories of playing Sherman, and I don't like how slow it is. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. that bothers me. I don't like how slow it is at repositioning. So, but that's just me. I understand a lot of people yeah. like it. The good popularity of the uh, ship speaks for itself. Yeah, right? you yeah. know, we played with Brand before when Brand's proct Halsey on it. It's oh, it's amazing <laughs> and it's great. Good for Brand. It's just not my cup of tea. Good uh, for you, you know. Brand. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's just not my thing. And that's the nice thing about this list of ships. There's a lot of different ships here, and a lot of them are different for you know different people, different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is that if you spend the coal on it, um, that you have fun playing it. And that you, it's something you enjoy playing, right? Because it's it's especially early on in your career, these are larger investments in your time. You've spent a lot of time in game to earn this coal, and so hopefully, in watching something like this video with us two knuckleheads talking, um, yeah. maybe maybe something we said about one of these ships will pique your interest in a way that you play now, and mm. you can use that information to make a make a uh, a better informed purchase, so that you don't end up with a coal ship that you don't like that sucks yeah and that's all we're trying to do right what we're not trying to do is tell you these are the right ships to get in the right order because there's no right answer for that but what mm -hmm. we do want to do is say enough words 
And if you enjoyed the show, if you enjoyed watching this, if you enjoyed watching it on YouTube later or skipping around to the sections, you might not be watching this part if you did that. Um, you know, like you said, it piqued your interest. It gave you some food for thought. And you said, yeah, those guys are idiots, but I like this boat because of, you know, something they said made me look this up and now I like it better or whatever. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's how we want to help, right? Um, yep. So now that's well said, Scott. Thank you. And thanks for your time, man. I think at this point, uh, this is probably where we'll wrap it up. Um, mm -hmm. appreciate you. Uh, I think we still managed to do three hours and 40 minutes on this. So all bets are off. Um, we'll yeah. get this onto YouTube soon for those of you guys uh, who want to watch it there. Scott, uh, thanks again for your time. Any closing thoughts for the people before, uh, I send you on your way before I set you have your, have your pets spayed and neutered. <laughs> thanks. <Bob>. All, got. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And hey, you'll be back. We'll talk about steel ships pretty soon. All right. Yep. Have awesome. Take it easy, man. Thank you. Good night. With that, we are done. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you. Keep your eye on YouTube. If you know somebody who think you think would like this video, send it to them as soon as it's live. You can send them to the VOD over here on Twitch if you want to, uh, but we're gonna have a cleaned up version on YouTube with bookmarks and all that stuff to make it really easily referenceable for them over there. Good night, everybody. It is so late.